Now you have to yell it this time. You have yeah. to yell it if you want a ticket. Wow. The next letter is G. Gum. Gum. Oh. Glasses. Okay, and then right there in the back. That's okay. All right. Oh, boy, I don't even want to give you the ticket. All right. G stands for getting started. And what I want to know is, how many new jewelers have not had their training show yet? Okay, and how many have had their training show and are within their first six, you haven't had your first six or nine shows for your quick start, not yet? Okay, how many of you new jewelers in here have already completed quick start and you're on now to your like 10th or 11th show? Okay, so we have a little bit of everything, but what we're gonna do here is we want to be able to tell you, we, the first thing you do is you pick your training show date. And you don't wait for your training show date to start getting bookings. And now, yes, your sponsor is going to do your training show for you. She is going to teach you how to do that show. And she is going to do a real good job in a booking activity and try to get those bookings for you <coughs> and with you. But what typically happens is say your training show was October 1st. I don't know why, and we're going to change this. But I don't know why a lot of people think that they have, they think it's like planning a wedding or a graduation party. They think they need three to four weeks advance notice to have a jewelry show. And so typically, they're going to go out a little bit. After your training show, you want to be able to do shows right away. Because you've, you've just done it, and you want it, it, it's just easier. Trust me, it's easier to do two shows a week than it is two shows a month. It just plain is easier, because you get in a rhythm, and you get used to it. And so in order to get those shows in the beginning, what we would like you to do is you're going to start with your friends and family to help you get started. And I'm going to have Amy actually role play. It's, you, you probably have this from your sponsor already. It's called Penny Lacey's How to Get Bookings for Your New Business. And most likely your sponsor either gave this to you or if she has it, she will. And you can ask her for it because everyone pretty much has it. But I'm going to, I'm going to have Amy role play this so you can hear the verbiage. And it's all printed up so you don't have to... Scribble, I want you to listen to what she's saying and absorb it because this is all scripted for you. So take it away, Amy. Mia. 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 I'm going to call you. Okay? Call um, me? Yeah, I'll call you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. Hey, Mia, it's Amy. How are you? Good. How about you? I'm good, thanks. Hey, I hope I'm not catching you at a bad time. <laughs> I will keep but just a minute, Mia. You know, I've, that's about all I have is a minute. Okay, perfect. Because I'm, I'm right about to go into a job right now. Well, I have a huge favor to ask you. Sure. I really need your help. Do you want me to give you a call back in a little bit? No, I have a couple minutes. Okay. Um, I'm starting this new business to help us make some extra money. See, Vince left his uh, police career, and we took a huge pay cut, so now I'm trying to do something to help me stay at home. Have you heard of Premier Designs? No, I haven't. You know what? I am now a Premier Jewelry Girl. It's beautiful jewelry. It's got a great guarantee. And Mia, here's where I really need your help. I need two friends that will help me in my first week of business. All that means is that you're going to allow me to come over, set up the jewelry on your kitchen table, invite a few friends over for coffee. Will you be one of my friends that helps get me going? Absolutely. Oh, gosh, Mia, that's awesome. And you know what? I'm going to be able to give you a lot of free jewelry for helping me. The average hostess gets about 100 to 300 in free jewelry. It's no big deal. Thank you so much. Hey, you know what? Do you have a second to look at your calendar? I do. Okay. What about next blah, blah, blah? Is that what you <laughs> You know what? That sounds great. Okay, fantastic. Awesome. Thanks. You know what? I'll call you later tonight. Thanks. All right. Thanks, Mia. I wish people would really do that for me because I used to, before I did Premiere, uh -huh. I would have girls that worked for me on my regular business yeah. that were looking for extra money. They would do candlelight, all this. I'd always have shows. Yeah. And Let me tell you the trick. Thinks it's a hassle. Well, and that's we're going to teach you that. Yeah. yeah. Let me tell you. Did you hear what she said? First of all, she's calling people. In the beginning, you're, you're not calling complete strangers. You're calling people that you know. Um, you know, maybe somebody from school, um, you know, old friends, maybe somebody that you haven't seen in a while, maybe an old high school friend. But did you hear what she said? Will you do me a favor? That's key. Mm -hmm. Will you do me a favor? The other thing that she said was she gave a why. It wasn't just, can you do me a favor? She said, gosh, Vince lost his job. I'm trying to make some extra money. Okay, what friend or family member, when you tell them, can you do me a favor, and if you tell them why, generally they're going to say yes. If you just call up and say, you know, I started this business and I want to get some new, in, how, how would you like to get some new jewelry, and you're, you know what I mean, and you're just kind of, you're sounding like a telemarketer, you know what I mean? You want to sound warm and natural, 
and you want to be honest and tell them why you want some jewelry. Do me a favor. This is why. Does that does that make sense? But what if you don't have a reason, like a losing of a job? Well, there's always just, a reason. I was just gonna. Because somebody over here had said it was a fun job. Who? Yes. Okay. That it's a fun job. Then your why would be, hey, I just started doing this this um, premier designs jewelry business, just for something really fun to get me out of the house to help me meet more women. There's always a why, oh, and that's yeah. why we asked you in the beginning, what is your why? Don't make one up. Why are you in this business? And so that is the favor, and that is what you're going to tell your friends. Because you, you, you don't want to make one up. You want to be honest. Everybody has a reason for being in for premiere. Everybody has some reason of why you're here. Now, Penny Lacey is, she used to be a jeweler for, what, 17, 18 years, 20 years. Penny Lacey was a jeweler, just like the rest of us. She is now working in the home office as director of marketing, and this is her verbiage. So when we talk about Penny Lacey, that's who she is, so you know she's really good, and she knows what we need out in the field. This is on our, is it on the website? Yeah, we also have it on the jump yeah, drive. Yeah, we have on the jump drive, yeah. Yeah, so. And you know what? We're not going to continue role playing, but on there also, if she it says, what happens if she says no? You know, there's always plan B and there's always plan C. Because your friends want to help you, right? They're your, they're your family, they're your friends, or people who love you. So plan B could just be, um, you might want to schedule, did, any, did anybody schedule their practice show? You got your training show set up, and we always say set up a practice show. Does anybody know what that practice show means? This is, no? Okay, this is really, really what you should do, especially if you have not had your training show yet. If your training show is like, like say it's Thursday, you want to set up a practice show on Tuesday. And so what you're going to say is, if they say that they can't come to your show, you can say, oh, that's okay. Um, I'm so bummed you're going to miss it, but you know what? Would you come to my practice show? Because I have to just practice. It is still a show. It's at your house. It's another show. It's your first one. And guess what? You're going to say, I'm going to do a drawing, and, 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 and you could win some free jewelry. Because basically, it's going to be a mystery hostess. If you don't know what that means, don't worry about it. Your sponsor will tell you about it. But talk to her about setting up a practice show. And the key thing for setting up a practice show is just like we tell our hostesses, one in four people are going to show up. Same with our training shows. Not everybody's going to be able to make it because there's, there's religious education, there's soccer, there's baseball, there's all these other things going on. So if you're calling to invite them to your training show and they can't make it because of obligations, don't take it personally. Say, you know what? Come to my practice show. Same thing like when you're calling to get shows on your calendar and they say, oh my gosh, I'm going to be out of town next week. I'm not able to. Instead of going, oh, boo me, this is awful. Nobody wants to do a show. Don't take it personal. Say, well, you know what, Mia, that's okay because I need two more friends to do a show the following week. Are you available the following <laughs> week? And if she says, oh, no, I'm still going to be out of town, not getting back until blah, 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 say that's okay because I need two friends to do it the that following. following week. And so you don't let them hang up until they get you get on the ground. <laughs> we always say work it like a doctor's office. Yeah. You don't, when, when a doctor's or a dentist's office calls you, you know, and you're making an appointment, they don't say, when do you want to come in? They tell you the next available appointment. Mm -hmm. And so that's how you want to be able to work your business. And then, you know, if that doesn't happen, guess what? Then you can do plan C and you can say, oh, you know, I'm so sorry you're not going to be able to make either one of those, um, but would you um, do me a favor and is there anybody of your friends that, that you know, loves to be able to, to get free jewelry maybe that, you know, you could give me a referral. So there's always, your friends and family, use them. That's how you get shows in the beginning. And then after that, you are going to want to do two things. You're going to want to learn these words. Replace a show with a show next month. A lot of the veteran jewelers understand that. Replace a show with a show next month. Everybody say that out loud. Replace a show with a show next month. Now, what that means is, and this is really important, I want you to understand that. Amy's going to be role playing a little bit an actual show. And she's going to show you a booking activity and how to get bookings and at checkout how to get bookings. And she's going to role play that. But what happens is, the rule is, if Amy has a show, and she gets zero bookings at all. She has homework because replace this show with a show. Now let's say that she, she did get a bunch of bookings, but you always want to try to get one in that next month. We said work it like a doctor's office. So you know what? We're not going to dwell on that. Just if you have that in your mind, you will never run out of a business. You will never run out of a business. So how do you, how do you get bookings? I want you to read your jeweler's handbook. Has anybody read that book? Has anybody not read that book? You know what? Read it. It's got awesome ways to book. You can book at shows. 
So during the show, you can get bookings. And let me tell you something. There's a hostess plan, which creates the need. And we're going to show you that in a little bit. And a booking activity brings people to a point of decision. Let me give you an example. Say that you're over at my house, and I had just baked some chocolate chip cookies. You could even smell it. You could just, you could just smell it. They're so yummy. And they're sitting on the table over there. And you come up, and I say, oh, Jean, I just made the best. I have a new recipe, and I have just made the best chocolate chip cookies. They are so yummy. And I stopped. And I just went on with something. What, what, am I, what, what did I not do? <laughs> Hello? I didn't even offer it to her. So basically, I'm going to say, Jean, I made some awesome cookies. You're going to so love them. Would you like one? Do you see the difference? That's natural. If you have something good, you're going to offer it, right? And that is what the hostess plan is. It's something really good, and the booking activity is, oh, I'm going to offer it to you. So if you got something good, it's just selfish not to offer it. And we're going to teach you. We're going to teach you the difference. There's a hostess plan and a booking activity. And you just need to know the difference between those. So get your purses out, your bags out for the next letter. this last December and um, but Andy and Joan are really the reason that Premier is different. Premier is a very very different direct sales company. If you're new here I hope that you have done your homework and looked at other direct sales companies because we really are different and really the whole reason that we are is because of that couple and their desires to create um, a company that is about people because really this is a people business it's just jewelry is the vehicle that's going to get you there. And so um, we all talked in the beginning, right, about how much money that you wanted to be able to make. We, the average show is $600. So your profit is going to be $300. If you do four shows, there you go, that's $100. So a lot of you, I heard, I heard $1,000 over and over and over. Some of you wanted $2,000, some of you wanted $3,000. But right now, if you're brand new, you're just doing home shows. Obviously, the sponsoring is the tool, and you can do that. But right now, if you don't, if you're brand new and, and you don't have a team yet, the money that you get is going to come from home shows. So what you need to do right now is you need to be able to say, hey, if I want to make that thousand dollars, I need to do four shows in that month. But guess what? If you want to be able to do four shows, you're going to need to have six on your calendar because we do have things called cancellations. And guess what? It's not just new jewelers that get them. Donna gets them, Amy gets them, I get them, we all get them. It's pretty normal. And so um, I just wanted to let you know that this business definitely does work. Donna told you a little bit. I did six home shows a month in 2005. That was my very, very beginning. And I made $36,000 that year. Now, the next year, I did four shows a month and made 53000 Now, how does that add up? How do I do less shows and make more money? And that, exactly. Sponsoring is definitely the way to go because it's not only, though, about getting yourself. Because guess what? If you are making money, that whole 10%, you are 
helping other people reach their dreams because you can't make money unless they do. And so anyway, I just wanted to make sure that you knew you have your why, you need to post it, you definitely need to be able to um, have that out there so you know what you're working for. You are going to get lifelong friends in this business. It is not, you are going to be friends with your customers. You are going to be friends with your hostesses. You, some of your hostesses are going to become team members. You are going to become extremely close with your team members. I kind of say that this is like a university here. We're here to teach you the beginning of this whole journey that you're on. And it's kind of like you're all in the same, we're in one big sorority. Because that's what we do. We all help each other. And it is. It, it is. You know what? And we have Amy and Donna and I are in three different teams. But I tell you, I talk to Amy almost on a daily basis. I mean, we are, we are BFFs. And that's what this business does. There's no stepping on toes. There's, there's just women empowering women. And you are going to find that that's what you can get with Premier. So it's not just about money. It is also about friendships. And you are going to just have some lifelong friends with this. Um, we have awards and recognitions. Because not only do you make money in this business, you start off with a kit. How many of you new jewelers got the gold kit? OK? I'm glad to see that, because that is the best way to come into this business. But would you, how, how many of you that got the gold kit would like more? Would you like to know? Really? Never enough. Would you like to know how you can make a pile of jewelry? You see all that jewelry over there? Amy is going to explain how you can make all, get all that jewelry for free. And you know what? I've gotten all that jewelry. In my first eight months, I got all that. And Amy, I think you've gotten all that, right? All that jewelry. It is doable. It's not required. But guess what? Who doesn't want to get all that extra free jewelry? Well, so, and here's the deal. Oh. Premier, you know, in most other companies, when you do your job and you're making money and you're doing your job, you're doing a good job, they don't give you a lot of recognition, or maybe they give you a pat on the back, but then they expect you to do more work. Premier says, you go out there, make yourself lots of money, and we're going to give you free jewelry so you can make lots more money for yourself and not have to keep reinvesting your own money into getting new pieces of the line. Do your job, you know, enrich lives, do shows, and earn lots of it for free. So we're going to get this up on the screen. I forgot to get it ready in one second. Um, oh, and but while we're getting that ready, I think that's caught there, yeah. Um, are any of you new jewelers sitting in here right now? Did you get your jeweler number in October? Stand up. Who, do, who got it in October? Gina B? Stand up. Okay, Gina, do you, did you, do you even know this promotion? I just, I just found out the And then did you get yours in, in October? I haven't gotten it yet, so I will be. Oh, then you will be. This is really, really good. So when Amy goes through this, can you guys see this or can I turn just these down? I'm going to blow it up, but... Can you say that or should I turn these lights off? That's common. Anybody? I'm going to just zoom it up a little bit. I'll just zoom it up like really good, like 200%, and then I'll just. Uh, oh, oh. Yeah. Okay, there we go. Okay, Amy. Okay, the first contest that you get that Premier gives you is your quick start contest $300 for doing nine shows within your first 45 days. Why do you want to wait to do shows? And if you work full time and, and um, you only want to do one show a week, that's great. But go for quick start, go for the contests, and win the free jewelry, and then slow down if you want to afterward. But you're not going to want to because um, it's kind of addicting. Um, so that's the first contest is quick start. Make sure you, um, you win that. That's in your first 45 days. After quick start is, well, because you're doing a lot of shows, naturally the next contest that you can win is part of the Crown Jewel program. And most people, we don't even think about this one. We, it kind of gets lost in the shuffle. The Crown Jewel program, when you have 3,000 CV, which is about, about 6,000 in sales, within your first, within 30 consecutive days, you win $200 in free jewelry. Now you also get CV from sponsoring jewelers that come in with a kit. When you sponsor a jeweler that comes in with the gold package, you get 750 CV. The silver package, you get 475 CV. Premier wants you to have a balanced business. So by retailing and sponsoring, you can earn more free jewelry. So this is the first one. Sapphire is within 60 days when you have 6,000 CV, you win $400 in free jewelry. After you do that, you can achieve Ruby, which is 
9,000 in 90 <laughs> days, so three months, and that sounds like a lot, but you know what, when you're sponsoring, the more shows you're doing, the more people you're in front of, the more people want to hear about this business, and Premier is rewarding you by giving you more free jewelry um, just in time for the new line to come out too. So that's 600, followed by Emerald, when you do 12,000 CV, in 120 consecutive days, they give you $800 in free jewelry, and that's very, very exciting. Now, Premier keeps track of that for you, but because, raise your hand if you're smart. <laughs> raise, your, raise your hand. We are all smart women in this room, and a smart guy in this room. Um, pay attention to your CV, pay attention to your sales, because if you miss it by like 25 points, you're gonna be really upset. So pay attention to it because um, that'll help keep you motivated. So that's the next. Then, because you've already done nine shows for your quick start, you're almost halfway to Home Show Club. What's Home Show Club? 25 home shows within 120 consecutive days. Now it's any consecutive days, but you're already doing quick start. You've already got nine shows under your belt. Why not keep going? Premier is going to say, congratulations, you've won Home Show Club. What's the big deal? The big deal is that then when you reach 100 home shows, Premier is going to give you uh, 250. Oh, that's what that one was, I think. They're going to give you $250. Oh. That's this one. I think $250 in free jewelry. If you don't do Home Show Club, you could do 100 home shows in any span of time, but you'll never get rewarded for it. They'll never give you the free jewelry. So. Earn Home Show Club, 25 shows within 120 days. Then you, once you hit 100 home shows in any amount of time, there's no time period for that, you win free jewelry, God bless you. Then when you win, uh, do 200 or 250, 250 the next one, you get more free jewelry and they just keep, you don't even realize it, you just get little checks in the mail and it's really nice. Um, so any questions on that? Okay, next one, Jones Rookie Team. I love this. When you first become a jeweler and you are really excited about this business, the best thing that you can do is share it with somebody else. Get a running buddy, get a girlfriend. People think, oh, I'm new jeweler, I can't, I don't even know this business myself. Actually, you learn much quicker if you have somebody to share it with and to teach right along with it. When you sponsor two girls within your first six months and do 12 shows, you are part of Jones Rookie Club, and this is a very elite club. Kelly couldn't get in this. Ooh. Wait a minute. I could, because I, I didn't have it. I know, because I didn't have it. I couldn't Not get because it I didn't, couldn't have gotten it. <laughs> no. I'm a little competitive there. <laughs> Neither one of us could. Donna can't even this get this new. one. This is new. So you this is only something been, that we can't even that's get. That's right. So do this. Two jewelers, 12 shows within your first six months. You get Jones Rookie Club and $300 in free jewelry, and you're halfway to Builder. Halfway to Builder. Builder is jewelers 24 shows you get another $300 in free jewelry and then when you're builder you are more than halfway to designer designer is you add three more girls to the team so now you got seven girls 36 shows and look at this whopping stack of jewelry $500 in free jewelry you guys this Premier sets it up for you. They want you to have a successful business. They want you to be out there making money for your needs, for your whys, and they're gonna reward you for doing so. So there you go. Your Absolutely. first year, go for all this. Absolutely, and you know what I wanna be able to tell you is generally if you get your quick start, you usually get amethyst. So your, your, your quick start and your amethyst, this is the beginning of the crown jewel and rookie club, and Home Show Club, it's kind of all in the beginning. You can get bam, 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 a bunch of them. I will tell you, I, I did get Amethyst, Sapphire, Ruby, and Emerald right away. You don't have, basically what it is, it's any 30-day span. So if you have a few home shows and, it, and you're not making it, it's any 30-day it's any span. It doesn't have to be the first of the month to the end of the month. And your sponsor will go over that with you in detail and help you learn how to track your CV so you know how close you are. But um, generally, you need, I think I did about six, six to eight shows to get that. If you're doing one or two shows a month, I, you know, I don't want you to be disappointed, but you probably won't earn Amethyst because you pretty much need to do, well, you can do the math because it's 3,000 CV. Okay, next letter. You got your diva ticket? I got them. All right, got I got your purses four. Grab your purses. The next letter is oh. E. Oh, well, what is it? You got to show it out. You got to show it out. Okay. 
Uh. Well, you guys are quick, though. All right, here's the deal. E stands for expectations. And I want to be able to tell you what to expect, because if you know what to expect, then it, you, you're going to be able to handle it, right? If something comes up at you on surprise, it's kind of a scary thing. So we want to be able to tell you things that will happen, and um, it happens to everybody, everybody. So to be successful, you need to learn to move on and get over it, okay? Because these things are going to happen to you. It's kind of like, you know, when you have your first baby, you don't really know what's going on. And then I remember when I was pregnant with my second baby, I was like, oh, I don't want to do this again because I know what, what happened. You know, but at least I knew what to expect and I knew I was going to be able to hold that bundle of joy and so it was awesome. One thing you're going to be is nervous. You know what? It could be outside of your comfort zone. You may not like to stand in front of people. You may not like to talk in front of people. You may have a lack of fashion knowledge. You may have a lack of organizational skills. Not everybody has every single thing that you need, but guess what? We're going to teach you and we're going to help you. And there is no cookie cutter jewelry lady. You don't have to be uh, a certain height or a certain weight or a certain hair color. You don't have to be, you can be shy, you can be very outgoing. It doesn't matter because we're going to give you the tools that are going to help you. There's lots of things that you're going to see where maybe um, somebody might memorize everything and just go for it. Maybe somebody else might want to use little note cards and maybe somebody else might want to use a flip chart. But we're going to give you the tools so it doesn't matter what personality type you have. Can I add something, Kelly? Absolutely. Raise your hand if you're still doing shows right now as a new jeweler or semi-new jeweler with friends and family. If you're still kind of in that group. Okay. Let me tell you something, and this is everybody that I've talked with and myself included. It is so much easier and less stressful when you get out of your family and friends because a lot of times they do it because of obligation. People you don't know will schedule shows with you because they fall in, they've fallen in love with you and they've fallen in love with the jewelry and they're doing it because they really want to. So just know that that's the end goal, to get out of family and friends. You want to be meeting people. And when you have friends and family that say, okay, fine, fine, Heidi, I'll do a show for you. Oh. <laughs> and you'll say, okay, we're going to get a lot of free jewelry and your hostess coach and we're going to go over all that stuff tonight. And she's going to sit, your friend might say, you know what, I'm just doing this to help you out. I don't really care about the free jewelry. I don't really care. I'm just going to, you know, do it to help you out. You need to know to tell her, the best thing you can do to help me is to work it like you really want that free jewelry. Get people there that I don't know. That's number one. So keep that in mind. When you're dealing with friends and family, they're feeling under the gun. You want to be able to move beyond them, and this business will be so much easier when you do that. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Work wisely. That's another thing. Work in the nooks. We always say work in the nooks and crannies of your life. And what does that mean? We are all busy, and there's only so many hours of the day, and we all need more. Would you agree? Or do you have like all this extra time on your hands? I don't care who you are. If you have little ones or if you have big ones, mine are all grown up, and I am still busy. So we always say it's a um, it's a crock pot business, not a micro not a microwave. So be patient. If you know that, if you want to build a team, somebody back here wanted who was the ten thousand dollar a month. You know what? You will get there, but you have to be patient because I wanted it overnight and I got antsy, and that and then I struggled with my business a little bit because I I, I you need to learn to be patient. It will come, for sure it will come, but you just need to work consistently and with intention. And that's what we're going to do. Don't, most of you are probably, I'm assuming, doing this business for your family, right? Maybe make some money to help your family. Make some money so you can spend time with your family. <clears throat> but you also need to know that you're doing this business for your family. So sometimes there might be a little bit of um, give and take, a little bit. My kids were real heavily you know, involved in sports. And did I need to be at every single practice? Or could I miss a few practices and just be there for the big games? So sometimes there is a little bit of a sacrifice. You're going to have a variety of home shows, okay? You are going to have low shows and a hundred dollars. Did you really? You really have hundred dollars shows? I did. So do I. I did. We all have them. You're going to have high shows. Adam, how many? How much? Um, I've had a twenty-three hundred dollars. Yeah, me too. I had like twenty-four hundred. And guess what? You go home and you're just like, I just made twelve hundred dollars in one night. Cha-ching! It's so fun sometimes. And it's legal. Sometimes it's legal. <laughs> I'm driving home and I'm just like, I can't even believe this business. And guess what? Not only are you going to have low shows and high shows, but you're going to have no shows. Yeah. Have you? Have you showed up and then nobody was there? Yep. And you know what? That's okay. Because you know what? Sometimes that can be your best show. Because you know that this is more about enriching lives 
And maybe that, think about how that hostess is going to feel. I have no friends. She's embarrassed. Just shower her with love. Play in the jewelry with her. And, and maybe she had a bad, you know, whatever. Maybe that was just the intent of that show, is to be able to, to become a friend with her. So just know that there's never a bad show. I remember coming home, and I was just, you know, whining and complaining because I had a lot of thousand dollar shows in the beginning. I, I just I just did. So that's what I thought was gonna happen all the time. And so I, I had this one show and there was like one person there and it was like a hundred dollar show and I was whining about how it didn't even pay for my gas. It was all the way down and wherever. And um, and I remember Rosemary Grayson saying, Kelly, there is no bad show. And you know what, from that show I ended up um, sponsoring somebody who who was became very close to me. She was a young mom, and um, and she had cancer, and, and she's she's with Jesus now. But you know what? She blessed me so much in my business, and I would have. You know what? That was one of those shows that I was complaining about. That wasn't worth it. it wasn't worth my time. And I could cry now, thinking, worth my time, man. Yes, it was worth my time. So just know that. Know you're going to have that. Postponements and cancellations. Yes. Definitely going to have those. Amy's going to host us coach in a little bit, and she's going to teach you how to minimize that. So we do have tricks and tips to help minimize those. But no matter how good you host us coach, no matter what you do, you're still going to have a postponement or a cancellation. Life happens. And so that's why you always have to say um, schedule a few more. Return exchanges. Lots of times new jewelers get really upset about this. Man, I've got some jewelry, it's breaking. I can't believe I'm selling this stuff, I'm embarrassed, it's breaking. Is this cheap jewelry, what's going on? And usually when it happens, it's like you get lots of them all at once. And you know what, <coughs> it, this is high quality, high end jewelry. Do you know our breakage percentage is like 2.5%. It is the lowest in the industry. It really is low. But let me tell you something, learn to embrace return exchanges. I can't tell you. Make up some of these packets, put a return exchange label, and every single time you get a return exchange, don't look at it as something that's bad. Embrace these, because these good customer service will get you hostesses, it will get you a sponsor, somebody to sponsor, because you are showering them. These allow us to serve. Do you guys want to know the difference that Premier really is? <clears throat> there are some companies where the customer is expected to send their items back if they break or a stone falls out. Our jewelry is man-made here in the United States, and, and stones are actually set in. If you go down to our manufacturing plant down in Texas, you can see them actually putting the stones in. And if there is a flaw, sometimes that might happen. Some other companies expect the customer to send it back and they will only they can will only be accepted back if they have the original receipt and the original packaging. Did you know that? I love that with our customers, they called me up. I had two hostesses just call me up and say, Oh my gosh, what do I do? What do I do? I don't and I'm able to take care of that for them. Embr Kelly's right, embrace it, love it, because most other companies, you're out of luck. And customers complain about that. Yeah. I had a hostess call me on Sunday night. She'd worn the more imagination necklace and the cord came out uh -huh. in the clasp, right? Uh -huh. Went and picked it up Monday before we came here. Ended up doing it online. It's already on its way to her house. Yeah. It's already been shipped and yes. she's gonna have it tomorrow. Yeah. So that in a matter of two days she's gonna get brand new. Yes. Yeah. And the first time you get it, all you have to do, we're not gonna teach you right now how, here how to do it because you're gonna learn so much. The very first time you have a return exchange, it's actually very simple on the website, and call your sponsor and she will help you through that. Um, the other thing to expect is difficult customers. You're dealing with people and you will have just difficult customers, but if I can just tell you this, if you can treat them with a servant's heart, no matter what, and just just shower them with love. I mean, I really it's had hard. some disease. It is hard. It is hard, and I had somebody that was really very rude to me several, several times. Really rude. And I literally almost wanted to cry when I got off that phone. And, you know, part of me just wanted to kind of just say, well, screw this. Yeah. But you know what? I showered her and showered her and showered her with just customer service. I said, oh, I'm, I'm so, let me, let me, you know, replace this for you. Let me do this. Let me do that. I just kept showering her. And you know what? <laughs> She's like one of my best hostesses now, and she is my $2,000 home shows, and she loves me. And you know what? It's because I gave her a servant's heart. So you know what? Do that. And Serve. you don't know what's happened before they called you. You exactly. don't know if they got into a fight or if, you know, 
you have no idea what happens. So have this. Absolutely. The last thing about what to expect, um, you also, at your shows, you really should look like the jewelry lady. Um, and you want, you want to look like the jewelry lady not only at your shows, but all the time. Because guess what? This business, we are always working this business. If you're at Jewel, if you're getting a cup of coffee, if you're running out to the post office, I don't care if you have yoga pants on and a little black shirt. You throw on some jewelry because I'm telling you, you will be amazed at what you can do when you're out and about. So you always want to look like the jewelry lady. And you know, we, I, we don't want you to change who you are, but if you've maybe not gotten a haircut in a while or you, you want to maybe update, update and do something like that, maybe if you don't wear makeup, I suggest it shows you put it, you know, just like when you are on stage, they always say wear a little lipstick and maybe some mascara because, you know, it just opens up and brightens things up a little bit. But you want to be in fashion and, and you want to make sure that you're, you're showing jewelry, you're showing rings, you want to make sure that your nails are manicured. And I know this may sound kind of funny, but you really do want to look the part. I mean, if you go to a, if you went and you saw somebody in scrubs, would you know what their occupation was? Yeah, you would know that they're either doctor, dentist, you know, whatever. If you saw somebody with the those overcoat, what are those coverall things are with the patch right here that said Joe, you know, would you know what he did? Right? He's a maintenance, you know, maybe working on cars, whatever. You know what they do. Well, you're the jewelry lady, so you need to look like the jewelry all the jewelry lady all the time. At your shows, we suggest. This way you don't have to go and you're not thinking, oh, I'm the jewelry lady now, I have to go buy all kinds of new clothes. You really don't. Because what you're going to want to wear is usually something same, same, different. And you really want to stay away from any kind of flowery outfit or busy outfit at your shows. It's okay when it's, you're out and about because you, you can match your jewelry. But if you're showing a lot of jewelry, if, you may not use yourself. You might use a mannequin, you might use net boards, you might use people. But at some point, you might be showing people on yourself, and you want the jewelry to stand out and not get kind of lost. So my suggestion is to get, um, I have black skirts, I have black capris, black pants. It doesn't have to be black, it can be, so but solid is good. Um, and then that way I don't have to think about it. I know that I'm always gonna throw on you know, a black t-shirt or a black dress or whatever, and then maybe throw on something like this. Do you have but anything here's, to I do, and here's something that, um, People at your shows, we all have black in our wardrobe, brown or white or tan. Not everybody, if I were to wear a fuchsia shirt, people might look at me and say, well, that looks good on you with that necklace. I don't have that color. I, I wouldn't look good in that jewelry. So when you're wearing basic solids, blacks, browns, whites, that are very neutral, everybody has that in their closet and they can relate to that and they can picture how it would look. I can't tell you how many times I'm at shows and somebody will say, well, put that necklace on. Let me see how that one looks thinking, well, you should put it on yourself and go look at yourself in the mirror because you're the one interested in getting the necklace. But they just, they can visualize themselves because you have uh, just a blank <laughs> canvas, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And you know what? Typically, we just, we don't really wear jeans. You do want to look professional. This is a business. Yes, it's fun. Um, and, and, and you're your own boss and you can do what you want, but we really do suggest you wearing, not wearing jeans. Um, because you want to be able to look and you want to have tons of jewelry on. You really do need to have on, you know, several stacked up bracelets and, and, and layered necklaces. And um, usually I like to wear expensive necklaces. They'll find the inexpensive ones in the catalog because usually what you're wearing or what you're showing is pretty much what they're going to buy. So that is what to expect. You guys want to know the next letter? Are you awake? Now you have to yell it this time. You have yeah. to yell it if you want a ticket. Wow. The next letter is... G. Gum. Gum. Glasses. Okay, and then right there in the back. That's okay. All right. Oh, yeah, I really want to give you the ticket. All right. G stands for getting started. And what I want to know is how many new jewelers have not had their training show yet? Okay, and how many have had their training show and are within their first six? You haven't had your first six or nine shows for your quick start, not yet. Okay. How many of you new jewelers in here have already completed Quick Start and you're on now to your like 10th or 11th show? Okay, so we have a little bit of everything. But what we're gonna do here is we wanna be able to tell you, we, the first thing you do is you pick your training show date. And you don't wait for your training show date to start getting bookings. And now yes, your sponsor is gonna do your training show for you. She is gonna teach you how to do that show. And she is going to do a real good job at a booking activity and try to get those bookings for you <coughs> and with you. 
But what typically happens is say your training show was October 1st. I don't know why, and we're gonna change this, but I don't know why a lot of people think that they have, they think it's like planning a wedding or a graduation party. They think they need three to four weeks advance notice to have a jewelry show. And so typically, they're gonna go out a little bit. After your training show, you wanna be able to do shows right away because you've, you've just done it and you want it, it, it's just easier. Trust me, it's easier to do two shows a week than it is two shows a month. It just plain is easier because you get in a rhythm and you get used to it. And so in order to get those shows in the beginning, what we would like you to do is you're gonna start with your friends and family to help you get started. And I'm gonna have Amy actually role play. It's, you, you probably have this from your sponsor already. It's called Penny Lacey's How to Get Bookings for Your New Business. And most likely your sponsor either gave this to you or if she has it, she will. And you can ask her for it because everyone pretty much has it. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna have Amy role play this so you can hear the verbiage and it's all printed up so you don't have to scribble. I want you to listen to what she's saying and absorb it because this is all scripted for you. So take it away, Amy. Mia. Mia. I'm gonna call you. Okay. Call me? Yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry. Hey, Mia, it's Amy. How are you? Good. How about you? I'm good, thanks. Hey, I hope I'm not catching you at a bad time. <laughs> I won't keep you, but just a minute, Mia. You know, I'm... that's about all I have is a minute. Okay, perfect. Because I'm... I'm right about to go into a job right now. Well, I have a huge favor to ask you. Sure. I really need your help. Do you want me to give you a call back in a little bit? No, I have a couple minutes. Okay. Um, I'm starting this new business to help us make some extra money. See, Vince left his uh, police career and... We took a huge pay cut, so now I'm trying to do something to help me stay at home. Have you heard of Premier Designs? No, I haven't. You know what? I am now a Premier Jewelry Girl. It's beautiful jewelry. It's got a great guarantee. And Mia, here's where I really need your help. I need two friends that will help me in my first week of business. All that means is that you're going to allow me to come over, set up the jewelry on your kitchen table, invite a few friends over for coffee. Will you be one of my friends that helps get me going? Absolutely. Oh, gosh, Mia, that's awesome. And you know what? I'm going to be able to give you a lot of free jewelry for helping me. The average hostess gets about 100 to 300 in free jewelry. It's no big deal. Thank you so much. Hey, you know what? Do you have a second to look at your calendar? I do. Okay. What about next blah, blah, blah? <laughs> you know what? That sounds great. Okay, fantastic. Awesome. Thanks. You know what? I'll call you later tonight. Thanks. All right. Thanks, Mia. I wish people would really do that for me because I used to, before I did Premiere, uh -huh. I would have girls that worked for me in my regular business yeah. that were looking for extra money. They would do candlelight, all this. I'd always have shows. Yeah. And Let me tell you the trick. thinks it's a hassle. Well, and that's we're going to teach you that. Yeah. yeah. Let me tell you. Did you hear what she said? First of all, she's calling people. In the beginning, you're, you're not calling complete strangers. You're calling people that you know. Um, you know, maybe somebody from school, um, you know, old friends, maybe somebody that you haven't seen in a while, maybe an old high school friend. But did you hear what she said? Will you do me a favor? That's key. Mm -hmm. Will you do me a favor? The other thing that she said was she gave a why. It wasn't just, can you do me a favor? She said, gosh, Vince lost his job. I'm trying to make some extra money. Okay, what friend or family member, when you tell them, can you do me a favor, and if you tell them why, generally they're going to say yes. If you just call up and say, you know, I started this business and I want to get some new, and how, how would you like to get some new jewelry, and you're, you know what I mean, and you're just kind of, you're sounding like a telemarketer, you know what I mean? You want to sound warm and natural, and you want to be honest and tell them why you want some jewelry. Do me a favor, this is why. Does that, does that make sense? But what if you don't have a reason, like a losing of a job? Well, there's always just, a reason. I was just going to, because somebody over here had said it was a fun job. Who, yes, okay, that it's a fun job. Then your why would be, hey, I just started doing this, this um, Premier Designs jewelry business just for something really fun to get me out of the house to help me meet more women. There's always a why. Oh, and that's no. why we asked you in the beginning, what is your why? Don't make one up. Why are you in this business? And so that is the favor, and that is what you're going to tell your friends. Because you, you, you don't want to make one up. You want to be honest. Everybody has a reason for being into for Premier. Everybody has some reason of why you're here. Now, Penny Lacey is, she used to be a jeweler for, what, 17, 18 years, 20 years. Penny Lacey was a jeweler, just like the rest of us. 
She is now working in the home office as director of marketing, and this is her verbiage. So when we talk about Penny Lacey, that's who she is, so you know she's really good, and she knows what we need on the field. This is on our, is it on the website? Yeah. Or we also have on the jump drive. Yeah, we have on the jump drive, yeah. Yeah, so. And you know what? We're not going to continue role playing, but on there also, if she, it says, what happens if she says no? You know, there's always plan B and there's always plan C. Because your friends want to help you, right? They're your, they're your family, they're your friends, or people who love you. So plan B could just be, um, you might want to schedule, did, any, did anybody schedule their practice show? You got your training show set up, and we always say set up a practice show. Does anybody know what that practice show means? This is, no? Okay, this is really, really what you should do, especially if you have not had your training show yet. If your training show is like, like say it's Thursday, you want to set up a practice show on Tuesday. And so what you're going to say is, if they say that they can't come to your show, you can say, oh, that's okay. Um, I'm so bummed you're going to miss it, but you know what? Would you come to my practice show? Because I have to just practice. It is still a show. It's at your house. It's another show. It's your first one. And guess what? You're going to say, I'm going to do a drawing, and, 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 and you could win some free jewelry. Because basically, it's going to be a mystery hostess. If you don't know what that means, don't worry about it. Your sponsor will tell you about it. But talk to her about setting up a practice show. And the key thing for setting up a practice show is just like we tell our hostesses, one in four people are going to show up. Same with our training shows. Not everybody's going to be able to make it because there's, there's religious education, there's soccer, there's baseball, there's all these other things going on. So if you're calling to invite them to your training show and they can't make it because of obligations, don't take it personally. Say, you know what? Come to my practice show. Same thing like when you're calling to get shows on your calendar and they say, oh my gosh, I'm going to be out of town next week. I'm not able to. Instead of going, oh, boo me, this is awful. Nobody wants to do a show. Don't take it personal. Say, well, you know what, Mia, that's okay because I need two more friends to do a show the following week. Are you available the following <laughs> week? And if she says, oh, no, I'm still going to be out of town, not getting back until blah, 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 say that's okay because I need two friends to do it that's that following <laughs> week. And so you don't let them hang up until they get you get on the right. <laughs> We always say work it like a doctor's office. Yeah. You don't, when, when a doctor's or a dentist's office calls you, you know, and you're making an appointment, they don't say, when do you want to come in? They tell you the next available appointment. Mm -hmm. And so that's how you want to be able to work your business. And then, you know, if that doesn't happen, guess what? Then you can do plan C and you can say, oh, you know, I'm so sorry you're not going to be able to make either one of those, um, but would you um, <coughs> do me a favor and is there anybody of your friends that, that you know, loves to be able to, to get spree jewelry, maybe that, you know, you could give me a referral. So there's always, your friends and family, use them. That's how you get chosen in the beginning. And then after that, you are going to want to do two things. You're going to want to learn these words. Replace a show with a show next month. A lot of the veteran jewelers understand that. Replace a show with a show next month. Everybody which means, say that out loud. Now, what that means is, and this is really important, I want you to understand that. Amy's going to be role playing a little bit an actual show. And she's going to show you a booking activity and how to get bookings and at checkout how to get bookings. And she's going to role play that. But what happens is, the rule is, if Amy has a show, and she gets zero bookings at all. She has homework because replace this show with a show. Now let's say that she, she did get a bunch of bookings, but you always want to try to get one in that next month. We said work it like a doctor's office. So you know what? We're not going to dwell on that. Just if you have that in your mind, you will never run out of a business. You will never run out of a business. So how do you, how do you get bookings? I want you to read your jeweler's handbook. Has anybody read that book? Has anybody not read that book? You know what? Read it. It's got awesome ways to book. You can book at shows. So during the show, you can get bookings. And let me tell you something. There's a hostess plan, which creates the need. And we're going to show you that in a little bit. And a booking activity brings people to a point of decision. Let me give you an example. Say that you're over at my house, and I had just baked some chocolate chip cookies. You could even smell it. You could just, you could just smell it. They're so yummy. And they're sitting on the table over there. And you come up, and I say, <coughs> oh, Jean, I just made the best, I have a new recipe, and I have just made the best chocolate chip cookies. They are so yummy. And I stopped. And I just went on with something. What, what, am I, what, what did I not do? Not Hello? I didn't even offer it to her. So basically, I'm going to say, Jean, I made some awesome cookies. You're going to so love them. Would you like one? Do you see the difference? That's natural. 
if you have something good, you're going to offer it, right? And that is what the hostess plan is. It's something really good, and the booking activity is, I'm going to offer it to you. So if you got something good, it's just selfish not to offer it, and we're going to teach you. We're going to teach you the difference. There's a hostess plan and a booking activity, and you just need to know the difference between those. So get your purses out, your bags out for the next letter. The next letter is H. Hand sanitizer, hair clip, hair brush. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, H stands for Home Hostess Coaching. And did you hear that? It's not hostess coaching, it's called Home Hostess Coaching. Hostess coaching is basically help, helping your hostess have a good show. And guess what, did you know that somebody might have their very first show and have never done a show before? Maybe they've never had a candle show or a makeup, they've never done anything. So you have to assume that they don't know anything about hosting a show. And sometimes it's real easy, you guys get it when you're new, because you're so new that you're kind of explaining it, actually partly for yourself, as you are the hostess. And then after a while, you just, you just assume everybody knows what they're doing, and they don't. So Amy's gonna role play it, and then I'm gonna talk about a few things. So mainly though, she's gonna just not, I want you to really pay attention to her, because she's not gonna tell the hostess what to do. She's gonna show and explain to the hostess. So listen to her, her who's your hostess? I'm mean, Michelle, do you want to help me out here? <laughs> hey Michelle, how are you? Good, how are you? Good, I brought your hostess packet for you. Um, we're still good for the date of the 27th at seven o'clock, right? Yeah. Okay, good, because that's gonna get you 25 bucks and free jewelry right off the bat. Michelle, why did you schedule a date with me? What got you really excited about, about uh, having me over? To get some free jewelry and have some girlfriends over. Okay, good. How much uh, free jewelry would it be great to have? Maybe 200. 200. What if I can get you like 300? Would that be better? Be awesome. Christmas gifts and hanging out with girlfriends. Okay, good. So I've got this packet for you. Um, I'm going to show you the best ways to get free jewelry. When 10 guests come to your show, you're going to get another 25 bucks in free jewelry. So that would put you at 50. And what I've done for you, Michelle, is I've got in here. Um, See. This right here. This will help you think of all sorts of people to invite. You want to invite as many people as you can. Nobody's ever offended by an invitation. So this helps you think of don't just invite the girlfriends from the neighborhood. Invite friends you haven't seen in a long time. And because this is your girls' night, this is a night women need a stress relief. They they need to cut. They need a night out. So you want to think of everybody and anybody that would like a night out. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So so here. Hold on to that. Um, and then when you get 10 people that come beside yourself, that's another 25 bucks and free over and by. We talked about that. Then you're going to have people that aren't going to be able to make that show. So what you can do then, you still want to offer them a really great uh, piece of jewelry for Christmas presents, that kind of thing. Um, $100 in sales before your show, you get another 25 bucks in free jewelry. And that's what this catalog, and actually this is kind of your show insurance. What I mean by that is when you get $100 in sales before your show, you're looking at 80 bucks and free and four items at half off before I even walk in the door. So how does that sound? That sounds great. Yeah, I'm so excited. Good, good. <laughs> Which all my hostesses were like you. Um, so that you really want to do that. And don't stop at 100 because every, everything is going to come back to you. And I have these um, order forms for you. Thank you. Oh, there. Oh, sorry. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I just they couldn't hear you that Okay. Better? Yes. Okay. All right, so here, here's the order forms. Um, super easy. Do me a favor, have your guests fill out the top part of here, okay? Um, especially phone number because if I need to get a hold of them, sometimes people order a ring and they forget to put down the ring size, so I want to be able to call them uh, without having to bother you. And an email address because I will send them a um, an email receipt form as well. So just write down the item number, the name, add that up, get your jewelry total, shipping, get that total, times by your tax. Your tax here is 8.5%. I have this handy little tax sheet for you right here where let's say they order $84 worth of stuff. You find $84 here, they owe 92.27. Easy? 
Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so those go with that catalog, and I'll just grip this catalog with the orders the night of the show. I don't need it beforehand, so don't stress yourself out trying to get it to me. Just hold on to it. Um, okay, then when three, if you get three girlfriends who are interested in doing a girls' night also, and they're the big hero because they got all their girlfriends together, you're going to get another 25 bucks in free jewelry also. So as you're talking to people, let them know that they can do this too. Um, on the back here, your, ten, your top ten favorite items, but you are going to want more than that, and I have this sheet for you too. I just got it. She has it. She has it. Other oh. <laughs> Thank you. Um, this side is for you to write down all of your favorite things. If you if you run out of space here, you can write them on here. Because typically, I'd like to close the show out the night of the show. If we have to leave it open a day or two, that's okay. But I don't like to leave it open longer than that because people want to get their stuff. Some people are getting them for gifts and and that kind of thing. And right here is a little formula that you can figure out what your show needs to be in order to get everything for free. Because I don't want you paying a dime out of pocket. I want you to get it all for free, okay? Um, all right. For your show, your guest list, you're going to over-invite. You've already got that. You know what? If you call your girlfriends and just say, hey, I'm having a girls' night. What are you doing on the 27th? Get them to come that way, and then the invitation will be a reminder for them. Um, people just respond better to actual phone call invitations. Show the catalog around. Um, complete your wish list. Simple refreshments, but you know what? Are you, tell me what you like to put out. If you're putting out for a girls' night, are you a closet caterer where you just like to put out a great big, huge spread, but nobody really knows that about you? Do you like to put out <laughs> chips and dip? I don't know which one you might. Yeah. What, do you, what do you like to do? When you're having girlfriends over, what do you like to do? Whatever. Okay. I I'm the closet. I just pull whatever. You, okay. Yeah. You do what you want to do. If you want to put out a great big huge spread, you can, but I'm letting you off the hook. If you are like me and I just stop at Chili's and get chips and salsa and that's pretty much it, um, you can do that too. Don't stress, spend a lot of time or a lot of money with snacks. Do what's easy for you. Also, when people come over to your house, where do they typically spend time? In the living room. In the living room, okay. You know what? What about, uh, you're, you've got a great kitchen area here. If we set the jewelry up right here on your kitchen table, you've got yeah. good lighting above here. We'll put some snacks, you know, over here too. People want to be by the jewelry and by the food. So we'll just keep everybody in the same room. And then even when I do the demonstration, just like I did at Mia's house where we met, um, I'll just do it right by the jewelry. And that way everybody is right there. They don't have to go to another room and it's all good. Does that work for you? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Um, now it does say that due to potential liabilities, Premier has no alcohol policy, but you're a big girl, what you do in your own home, I just would prefer if there's going to be a lot of, you know, whooping it up, just wait till I'm all done and out there. People just get so happy these days and they're not going to come after, you know, we don't want anybody coming after you or me or, or the jewelry company. So. Um, any questions for me? No. no? Mm -hmm. This is going to be fun. I'm telling you what, don't, you don't even have to clean your house. We'll light some candles <laughs> in the other room. Don't even clean your house. Just have the table cleared off. I will show up your shows at 647. I did that on purpose because people will notice the time and they'll think you're crazy. i got to see what Michelle is up to. Um, and then I will show up at your house about 40 minutes prior to. And we'll just go ahead and set the jury up there. Um, also, let me ask you something. Have you ever thought about doing something like this? No. No? Do you know, do you have any girlfriends that would be interested in making about 50 bucks an hour? Uh, I'm not really sure. Okay. Well, I'm going to leave you with this sheet also. This kind of shows you a little bit of information about this business. If you know of somebody that's maybe struggling because they've got kids in college now or gas prices, you know, are crazy or they need a new car, get them here because our reps on average we make about 50 bucks an hour about three hundred dollars every time we go to a jewelry show um, we have a three-month trial there's no quotas so you really can work it in around your schedule um, so I'm going to leave this information kind of with you also but do me a favor don't throw it away if it's not something that you're interested in pass it along to a girlfriend because I have a really good referral program too okay okay um, any questions for me Okay. Yeah, what's that noise? <laughs> Can the dogs in the backyard? Um, okay, well, great. Thank you so much for letting me stop by. I'll see you soon. Perfect. Oops.
You know what? They're, these new hostess packets are brand new. They just came out. I'm and stuck. Um, oh, you are stuck. I'm stuck. <laughs> <laughs> to roll it. Help me. Pull it Help me. Oh, wait a minute. This is really in there. Okay, wait. There we go. Okay. <laughs> Good thing we're taping this. <laughs> we'll have to edit that part out. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. I'm not in. Um, it's staying in. Well, and usually I have, and I, I grabbed the wrong hostess packet. This one wasn't quite finished. Um, but I usually have my last 10 home shows in there. If you don't have 10 home shows that you've done or your first 10 home shows, use your sponsors because that's a pretty powerful tool when people can see how much free jewelry you've given away and how much you can make um, by doing this because we're different than other companies. Yeah. You talked about a tax sheet. Yes, good. I forgot that too. Um, on the website, when you, when you do home shows, each town has a different tax rate and you can just go in and, and um, type in their zip code and a tax thing will pop up and you can print it out. I print that out and I bring that to my hostess coaching appointment so she doesn't need a calculator when filling out order forms. It's just a really easy tool. Mm -hmm. What about when you look at the tax rate and it gives you a couple of different... Good question. Yeah. Um, some areas have different tax rates. That's usually for within city limits or outside of city limits. Outside of city limits is unincorporated. They're usually unwell and septic. Nine times out of ten, your homes are going to be, it's the higher one. It's inside city limits. And if it's not, I always just choose that higher one just because that's what it usually is. And it really only is pennies of a difference. Now, the reason that you want a hostess, home hostess coach is because you're creating that relationship. And it's all about, Premier is all about relationships. And if you noticed at the very end, she offered about, would you like to make $50 an hour or do you know of somebody that could? You know, when you're sitting there and you're in her home and, you know, you just can relate to her a little bit more. When you walk in, you may want to compliment her on, you know, on something with her house. You can kind of like see what her kids do just by looking at the pictures. This is a relationship that you're beginning with your hostess. The other reason is you want to be able to take a trial run to her home. Because would you rather get lost at the hostess coach or would you rather get lost at the show? So it's a good good way to just make sure you know where you're going. You also want to do visuals. You know what? There is no exact one way when you're setting up a home show. Everybody's house is different. You may want to set up right away and like, like Amy said, have the jewelry in the kitchen and, the, and then the, the food is on the island. You know, there might be people that say, you know, my friends would be more comfortable in the family room when I'm, you know, when we're just sitting down looking at the jewelry presentation. So you, you may do shows sometimes one way and sometimes the other way. It certainly is okay to have all the jewelry in a big table in the dining room, and then if you have all of your jewelry in the dining room and you're sitting in the family room, you can still have a small amount that you're showing. The, the jewelry doesn't have to be in the same room. It can be. It's, you know what I'm saying? It might just depend on the house, and it might depend on where you, know, where you are. I generally do try to make sure that the hostess has very limited little amounts of food because the reason why is usually you get started right away and um, you're going and people really aren't in, you don't want people in by the food, you kind of want them in, you know, like playing with the jewelry. And um, plus if somebody has a lot of food there and it looks like it's kind of expensive, somebody m might not want to book a show because they're thinking, wow, that's going to cost a lot of money. So you want, that's why we always try to have them have a the little amount um, as possible. The hostess coaching, once you do the hostess coach, we generally say to do that, about three to four weeks ahead of time. And the reason we do that is because we want to be able to give that hostess a chance to turn that into our training show. If you noticed, Amy said, is there anybody that you can think of that could use 50, make $50 an hour? Do you know lots of times your hostess will say, yeah, me. And the thing is, generally that's your number one prospect, is your hostess. So you want to be able to give her time to be able to do that. There's a checklist. We're not going to go into this in detail. But your sponsor will help you do that. We just want to make sure that you know that it's there and that you are using it because you are going to follow up and you are going to call. Um, you're going to you're going to check back with her a couple weeks later and then a couple days before her show to remind her to do um, her reminder calls. And you want to build this relationship. You don't want to sound like a telemarketer to her. You might want to say something like, "Hey, who have you, do you, are you having anybody come that's like you haven't seen in a while?" Yeah, yeah, my, my friend actually from high school. Oh, that's so awesome. I'm so excited for you. Not, how many people are you having coming so I know how many folders I need? Do you know what that says? How many people are you having so I can see how much money I'm making? 
Do you know what I'm saying? Be her friend. Be genuine and just create that relationship with her and, and like your friend. But you're going to be able to fill this out and you want to be able to use this as your checklist. This is really there to help you remember to go through and finish up with that, um, with that hostess. So, right? Anything else with that? With the hostess? Uh... Mm -hmm. All right. We have another letter. Get your purses out. This letter. Is that your tickets? Yeah. Man, these girls are good too. You got your work cut out for you. The next letter is S. Sunglasses. Oh. Whoa. Whoa. Schedule. I got one more. Schedule. Schedule. Uh, Wait, who said that? Right behind oh. you. Oh. Like, I, I heard it coming from somewhere. All right. S is show time. We've already had the hostess coach, so you got your hostess all excited about the show. Now we're going to pretty much go through the home show. And uh, the one thing you want to be able to do is you want to arrive on time. Um, if the show starts at 647, uh, generally, I don't know, 6, 6, 15, you want to be able to, however long, obviously in the beginning sometimes you're just not sure how long it's going to take to set up, so you're going to want to be able to practice that, but you want to make sure that you're all set up. As guests are coming in the door, you do not want to be setting up the jewelry, because you know what? You want to start creating relationships right away with the guests at the door. So you want to make sure that your jewelry is all set up. This is not what you're going to do. The doorbell rings, and you're going to stand here and go, hi. Career Designs Jewelry. <coughs> Hi. <laughs> How are you? You're not going to do that, right? Because you are going to actually go greet the guests. And I'm not going to go too much because Amy's actually going to role play from the very, very beginning um, of the entire show. But I just want to be able to just say a few things. You want to be able to meet and greet them, maybe use name tags if you're not real good. I, I really highly suggest that because you know what? How would it be if I just said, hey, hi, you, um, what, you know? But if I say, Jean, you know, if I'm talking to her and use her name, it's just so much better. So I would really suggest to wear name tags. I just think that that really helps. Um, <coughs> if your show starts at 647, the invitations, I like to start my show at 7 o'clock. Here's what's going to happen. I'm going to tell you this because it's going to happen. Remember that 10 guests where they get that extra bonus? Here's what's going to happen. Your hostesses are going to go, oh, well, Susie's coming, and she'll be here at 7.30. And so everybody's waiting for Susie to come because maybe Susie was that 10th person. And Holly Hostess wants to be able to get that bonus. But you have to be respectful for the people that came there on time. And so, and you want to be able to get out of there. She didn't invite you to spend the night just to have, you know, some fun with the jewelry. So basically, um, you want to try to get that show started at 7, and you want your show to be about 30 minutes. If you're there for 45 minutes or an hour doing a show, they are going to get bored with you. You want to have it powerful, fun, enthusiastic. You want it to be informational. Um, teach them something. Create the need with the jewelry. And um, that is what, what Amy's going to show you how to do. So we are actually going to start. Do, do you even want to start even maybe just greeting a couple guests? Just, you know, just kind of role play that. And she's going to just go through the whole home show, not stopping in between and just doing the whole thing. And then when she's done, I'm going to kind of break it apart and explain why she did certain things and different variations. OK, but we want to be able to make sure that you know like this is the whole home show. OK, take it away, Amy. Hi, I'm Amy. Hi, Amy. And you are Mia. Is it M? M-E-A. M-E-A. How do you know Michelle, our hostess? We work together. Oh, good. Did you just, did you work today? <coughs> we did. A long day. Well, good. You're in for a fun. I can't get this off. You're in for a fun night. We're going to have a lot of fun tonight, Mia. I'm glad you're here. Hi, I'm Amy. Hi, I'm Jean. Jean, nice to meet you. How do you know Michelle? Oh, I've known her since we were like five years old. Oh, gosh. Good friends. And you live in the area? Yeah. Okay. Good. So you didn't have far to drive. Good. Glad you're here. Come on in. She's got, can I get you something to drink? A bottle of water. She's got some pop in there. No, yes. I'm good. Okay, all right, okay. Let me play in the jewelry a little bit. You guys can fly over here and try stuff on it if you want. And we're mingling, we're talking, we're mingling, we're talking. Okay, ladies, we're going to get started here. It's gonna, we're we're going to have a really fun time tonight. We're not going to go in the living room. We're just going to hang out here by the jewelry table. And I know you're here to kind of meet and greet with everybody, but I really appreciate you coming. And um, we're going to start with an on-time drawing. So everybody take your tickets out. And... Um, Okay, the winning ticket is last three digits, 219. Oh, it's me. Oh, Jean, hey, good. <laughs> <laughs> now, 
There you go. You win our fabulous post-it notes. All your girlfriends are going to be jealous. I'm a post-it queen. I love post-it notes. But those are for you. And um, ladies, I really want to thank you so much for being here tonight. And Michelle, thank you so much for having me. Girl, you are the rock star because you scheduled this. We don't have enough girls' nights out. So we appreciate you doing this. And I'm going to start you out with... The bracelet. Isn't this so pretty? That's my it's favorite. Good. I love it. Just for you. It's not available in catalog. Um, and it's got some of our charms on here. The jewelry, the, the ring, the heart. You are the heart of my business. The crown, which represents Premier's Royal Way of Service. It really means you're the queen bee. So there you go. Um, you also get 25 bucks in free jewelry just for having me here. 25 bucks in free jewelry because you've got some free sales and you've got more than 10 girls hanging out with us tonight. Girl, you're already at 75 bucks in free jewelry when we haven't even started yet. So, again, thank you so much. Isn't she awesome, you guys? So glad we're here tonight. Um, my name is Amy Logan and I really want to be your favorite jewelry girl. What's my name? Amy. Okay, yep. For as long as you let me, you know, we're going to have a good time. We're going to be fast. I'm going to share with you three things tonight that are just going to blow your mind. I'm going to show you how a little piece of jewelry, because the jewelry show, a little piece of jewelry can make the world a difference. I'm going to show you how versatile our jewelry is. A necklace just can't be worn one way. It can be worn several ways. And a clip it, you're going to fall in love with this thing. And I'm going to show you how you can transform your wardrobe within a matter of seconds. And to be very quick and to keep me on track, because it is... 8 o'clock now, we want to be out of here by 2 a.m. I'm just going to have my little chart here. I'm going to give you a letter, and the first person that shouts out a compliment to Michelle gets a diva ticket. First letter is P. Very pretty. Okay, pretty. Okay. How many of you have never heard of Premier Designs? We, you guys, we've been in business 26 years. There's three types of jewelry. There's costume jewelry, which tends to break and flake first few times you wear it. There's fine jewelry. We all were born knowing what Tiffany jewelry, Tiffany's was, right? Premier Designs were considered high fashion. It bridges the gap between the two, but we're closer to fine because we're plated with the real thing. Okay, next one. She is G. Great, great. She is great. This G is for Golden Guarantee. You guys, this is really important. I love this about our jewelry. How many of you have ever bought a necklace and it broke within the first few times wearing it or a stone fell out or a class broke, something like that happened? We want you to be confident and comfortable with your purchase when you get with Premier, or when you purchase something with Premier, we have a golden guarantee. When you get your jewelry, if there are any manufacturing defects within the first um, 60 days, six, six, <laughs> brain, yes, when you, when you, within the first 60 days, if there are any manufacturing defects, you call me up, I get the piece back from you, I'll send it back to Premier, they're going to send your brand new piece free of charge. After 60 days, it's $5 plus tax, but they're still going to replace it for you, and you don't even need your receipt. I keep a copy of your receipt for you, okay? So you can be confident that uh, your jewelry is going to be good. Moving on, next letter, she is C. Carrie. Okay, she's cute. <laughs> My C is for closets. How many of us have looked in our closets and thought, gosh, I have a closet full of clothes but nothing to wear, right? This is why jewelry is so important. We typically wear 20% of our clothes 80% of the time. Would you agree? Yeah. So jewelry is going to bring new life back into that 20% that we wear. It's going to make it look new again. It makes us look pulled together, even our T-shirt and jeans. And I'm going to teach you how easy that is, and we're just going to play in the jewelry. I'm going to start by showing you what I have on. This one here is right out of our catalog, our Christmas line. And look, I'm just in a plain black dress, and I've dressed it up with jewelry. I could also dress it down depending on what jewelry I'm wearing. This one, I have no idea what the name of it is, but it's in our Christmas book. The first one to find it is going to get a diva ticket. Oh, you guys don't have Christmas books yet? Oh, I've got them. Hit them. I'll pull them out at the end. Gorgeous. I love it. I had it on double. You can also wear it long. Any of these long necklaces, you can also take and create that Y style with it. I might want to extend it a little bit, but Uptown. I love it. What's it? Uptown. Uptown. Thank you. Here's the diva ticket. <laughs> <laughs> so I love it. Uptown. And there's a matching bracelet. I have on the matching bracelet, but I want to show you this one too. Stretchy bracelets. They are so easy. And I'm, as the weather gets chilly, we're going to throw on a jacket. Pull up your sleeves. If you've got bracelets on, people automatically think you look pulled together. You also want to dress up your watch. I've got two new bracelets in our holiday collection. This one is called Swanky, I think. And then Uptown, next to my watch. Look at the difference it makes just by having your watch. But when you add on a few bracelets, it makes the world a difference. It gives you that designer-inspired look. And I love that. And I know you're all looking at my 
my fabulous ring, thinking I'm all that. This is in our holiday catalog also, so have me over and get that one too. Um, okay, but that's it. Other than earrings, jewelry, does it make a difference with what you're wearing? It does. So if it makes a difference on me, it'll totally make a difference on everybody here. Now for the fun part. I'm going to have Tiffany Stiffany help me out. She's going to be my model here. Don't you love what she has on? The layered look is in, and by layering, it draws more attention to these pieces here. This one is called Florence. You want to see something cute with this necklace? If you clasped it in the front, you could get that layered look. Super cute. I love this. And that brassy look is really hot this fall. This one's called Florence. And this fringe here, really cute. But how many, how many of you guys think, I'm not really a big jewelry wearer, you know? Yeah, I know. Some of us, uh, and that's okay. I'm going to start you out with this must-have. This one is called Silverado. It's four silver strands. It gives you a little bit more depth than just a one silver strand necklace. It'll dress up t-shirt and jeans. And when you want to be a little bit more bold, you're going to grab one of our um, enhancers. The fold-over magnetic makes it so easy. And that's Safari. You're going to throw Safari on there. You want to add a little bit of color? I'm going to take Cabo and throw Cabo on there. Super easy, super fun. Um, okay. I'm going to take that one off, really easy. And because Tiffany Stephanie here was a smart diva and had me over, she got lots of jewelry, and she thought, gosh, I want to be a little bit more dramatic, because women, we love drama, don't we? Um, so she put on this black essence necklace. Everybody needs just plain black beads in their wardrobe. And we're going to flip these two together. And look at how stunning this is. It's a little technique just called flipping. You flip the two of them together, and it makes it more of a dramatic look. And I love these fold-over clasps because normally this necklace, this is all you could do with it. But watch. If I wanted to add a little something, something to it, I'm going to take my enhancer and throw that on there, too. And look at how rich that looks super cute. So this is all part of your basic diva collection right here. I love these pieces. How many of you like the long necklaces? Love these long necklaces because you can do a lot with them. This one here is called Lady Fair. How many of us have ever wanted to wear a necklace like this? 20 minutes later it ends up like this and it's a hot day. <laughs> This is going to be your best purchase you ever make. It's called a clip it. We sell them in gold or silver, and there's a couple other colors out there. What you do is you put your clip it at one end, grab your other end, put it behind your neck, and you clip it. And because of the beads, it's going to hold it in place. There it goes. And it's not going to end up with one being choky. If you wanted to create a choker, you could unclasp and wrap and wrap and wrap. <laughs> but you have no idea where the clasp is to take it off at the end of the night. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to use that clip it. And there you go. And now you've got a choker style necklace on there. And if one necklace is good, two are better. Look at how dressy, just by adding two necklaces, Opulence and Lady Fair, look at how dressy that is together. Very classy, very <clears throat> stylish. Now, have you ever seen the necklaces that are just but like the tie, very long, kind of the lariat style? Super easy to do. Put your necklaces around your neck, and just like you would wear a scarf, you're going to thread those through. And now you've got that Y-style necklace. Very slimming. We love that. So now, just with these couple of pieces, there's a lot of different ways to wear it. You want to, how many of you have walked through a store and you saw ribbons on the necklaces? Love that. What you can do with your necklaces is you put them around your neck and you take your ribbon and thread it through. Because at the end of the season, if you don't want to wear the ribbon, if you cut it off with the other necklaces, that might that'll ruin the necklace. Not with ours. Whoops. You just put it around, you use your ribbon to hold it together. And you can wear that ribbon off to the side or wear it in the back. So Stephanie looks good coming. And go in. <laughs> and if you don't like that choker look, you just don't tie the ribbon so tight and you let it hang down here 
in the front, and you can get ribbon in any color that you want. You can get it at the dollar store, Walmart, wherever. Um, how many of you are pin wearers? Any pin wearers? Most of us don't wear pins because we don't know what to do with them other than wear them on our coats at Christmas time, the tangled look, very in these days. Um, this is one of my favorite pins. This one here is called Pearl's Night Out. I'm going to put it around. I'm going to use it to close my necklace. I'm just going to, instead of using the clip it or the ribbon, I'm going to use my pin to hold it together. And it's all about placement. You can place it there, or you can place it off to the side. And it looks really stunning. Especially for the holidays, Christmas, for weddings. We've all got a little black dress or black. This will dress it up completely. I love this. Or if you don't, if your necklace isn't long enough to create that choker, but you still want this look, then what you can do is use your pin to close it together to create that lariat style like this and let that hang down. Mm -hmm. Or if you have a backless dress, you can do or a backless top, turn it around and let this hang down the back. And that's really pretty too. And she's got back bling. <laughs> it's better than back fat. <laughs> it's probably better than back fat. We like that. Back bling. Okay. Let's see. How do you like those pieces? Good so far? I want to show you a couple. One other of my top, top sellers here. This one here is called Manhattan. Girls, you're going to fall in love with this one. Manhattan. Okay, yeah, it looks great like that, but now let's double it. See, it's easy to accessorize when you don't have a head also. So. <laughs> um, and you're going to separate the strands a little bit and wear it messy, or keep it together. And this is the artistic pendant hot off of our fall line. You can throw that on there, and while it's, you know, looks a little chunky, or you can flip it to, cre to make it look like it is one strand that it's on. And I just think that looks so rich. Stephanie does too. Okay, this one's Manhattan and artistic. And um, yeah, let me show you this one too because this is another really hot item. Oh, I don't do this one here. This one here is called Urban, and this one is Urban Chic. I love Urbanite. It's called. Here it is, long, super cute, long white T-shirt, jeans, adorable. Then you can also double it, and what I love about it when you double it is that it becomes asymmetrical. This side is not the same as this side, and that's a really hot look also. And if you wanted to, you could add a pin. You could take the Camille pin and throw that on there, and that's really cute. I love it. And pins are also great to throw in your ponytail holder, you know, to dress up your hair a little bit. Pins are great to um, put on your headband. You know, that's really cute. In the summertime, I had a girl come and she bought two pins at one of my sample sales and she put them on her flip flops and just dressed up her flip flops. It was real cute. So, so there you go. I've got lots of other tricks, ladies, but we're gonna, we're gonna move on because, because we can. All right. Next letter is, uh, oh, you know what? I forgot to hand these out. Everybody take one of these. There we go. Okay. Next letter is S. Michelle special. is S. She's special. <laughs> that could go either way, Michelle. I don't know. <laughs> um, in a good way. In a good way. Okay, good. You get an extra D to ticket for that. All right. In that baggie, pull out your guest survey. There's a little guest survey in there. Pull that out. And I'm going to walk you through this. Um, I'm going to walk you through this. Um, the top part, fill out your name your phone number, star the phone number that I can reach you at during the day because if I have a question about your jewelry order, I don't want to have to bother Michelle. I'd like to be able to give you a call. Then put your email on there because I'm going to email when all the jewelry is going to get delivered to, um, to Michelle also. Thank you. And then I want you to look at that first question. That first question is, do you want free jewelry? Would you like free jewelry? Girls, this is a no-brainer. Everybody should check yes because did you see all of this? This is typical of what my hostesses get for free and half price. And look, we're just hanging out with girlfriends. It's not a big deal. Check yes. Have me over. I'll do invites for you if you want. 
and um, you're going to get a ton of free jewelry. Want to see what that looks like? Here's what hostesses get. First of all, you get up to $100 in bonuses. Then you get 30% of every single order in free jewelry. You also get up to eight items at half price. It's a lot. Get your Christmas shopping done for free. Be the big hero. Have a girls' night and have the girls over. You will thank me for it. And I'm going to even <coughs> sweeten the deal a little bit. I would like for you to take one of these boxes. There you go. There you go. And you know what? You can even take one of these boxes, Michelle. You're welcome. And go ahead, open up those boxes. In that box, that's a special <coughs> gift for me to you for setting a date with me tonight. You're going to get a ton of free jewelry. I'm going to sweeten the deal and just give you a little bit more as a thank you. And to sweeten it even more, because I think you girls are the most fun to be around, any of these dates here, these are my hot dates. When you choose one of my hot dates, I'm going to double what's in that box for you. So really, it is worth your while. Have me over. We'll have a fun girls' night, and you'll be the big hero. Um, so make sure you bring those boxes up to me at checkout, because I'm going to see when you're, when you're going to want to do your date. Everybody should check yes. Okay, so hold on to those for right now. The next question is, do you want to pass the catalog around? You can get free jewelry. Take the catalog to work, pass it around, and get some orders. You can also get some free and half price stuff that way. Question number three. Before you answer that, I want everybody to close their eyes. And I want you to think about, if I were to give you, as girlfriends, if I were to give you $1,000 every single month for six months, what would you do with it? What would you spend that money on? Would you go on a, a vacation? Would you pay for college tuition? Um, remodel your living room? Diva tickets. Open your eyes. Diva tickets. What would you do with it? Remodel my kitchen. Remodel your kitchen. What would you do with it? Pay off some bills. Pay off some <laughs> bills. Okay, Michelle, what would you do with it? Going on vacation. Going on vacation. Oh, I like that. Well, I want you to, you know what, Michelle, I want you to come up here for me. Everybody keep that thought in your mind. Come on up here. And I want to show you, I know not everybody came here tonight wanting to be a jewelry lady. Um, but <laughs> nobody ever <Sorry>. tries. <laughs> um, but you might know of somebody because this next little skit, even though it's a little bit silly, this is what caught my eye because before I started doing this, my husband was a police officer and both of us went back to school to be teachers and we took a huge pay cut when he changed careers, huge as in $40,000. And I was thinking, oh my gosh, gonna have to go back to work. I was at a jewelry show just like you guys were. Let me just show you. You might know of somebody who could use big money. Get it? This is big money. Um, there are no quotas. You're going to work as much or as little as you want. We're going to have you just work one night a week. Does that work for you, Michelle? Yes. Okay. So the first week, give me a day or night you want to work. Um, Friday. Okay. Friday, you have a $400 show. You make 50% and get paid immediately. That's so you awesome. go home with how much money? I'm excited. 200 bucks. 200 bucks. <laughs> Good. All right. The next week, day or night, you want to work? Um, day. Okay. A day. Wednesday, Saturday. Yeah, sure. Okay, sure. Wednesday, you have a $600 <laughs> show. It was good. Kids were in school. Moms played in jewelry. You had a $600 show, so you made another $300. $300. Wow. Okay, the next week, day or night, you want to work? Uh, night. Okay. A Wednesday or Wednesday. Saturday, you have a $400 show. You make another $200. $200. Okay, the last week of the month, when do you want to work? Tuesday. Okay, Tuesday. You have a six hundred dollars show. It was real close to home. You're only gone a couple hours, and you made how much money? Three hundred. Three hundred dollars. <coughs> how many times was she gone? Four. How much money did you make? Thousand. Okay, clap for her because you see she worked her butt off. Thank you. You're welcome. And again, ladies, I share that with you because you might know of somebody that this could really make a huge difference for. So that question, question number three, check the box that says yes, that you want some more information about this business, even if it's not for you, but you might be thinking about it. And this is fun. This is what I do. This is what we do. We just provide fun girls' nights for women to come and play in jewelry and just reconnect with each other. So let me know if you want some more information. And as a matter of fact, in that packet, Pull out, man, I'm just going to borrow this one from you. I have in here my Are You Curious sheet. If you're thinking, okay, can you really make money doing this? Well, yeah, this shows you how much profit you can make just doing this. These are my last 10 shows on here. You can look at that. And on the back is an invitation for you and a girlfriend or anybody to come here a little bit more about this business. So I'm going to see if you wanted to, um, I'll, I'll give you some more information about that at checkout, but take a look at that. Um, 
Okay, the next question is, what's the next question on the guest survey? If the jewelry. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. If the jewelry lady, <laughs> if, er, <laughs> if Michelle decided to become a jewelry lady, everybody should check yes on this next one for sure. If Michelle decided to do this to cash in her $1,000 every month to go on that vacation that she wanted to go on, would you do a show to help her get her going in her business? You all should check yes for that because otherwise she's going to defriend you on Facebook. <laughs> um, and then right underneath that, ladies, it says, I love referrals, and I do love referrals. Um, if you know of somebody who's not here tonight that you think, oh my gosh, she would love to see this catalog, or she would think that jewelry lady is fabulous also, put her name and number down so I can give her a quick phone call and see if she wants me to send her a book. And then you can write down any comments, what you loved or didn't love so much about, uh, about tonight. But that is it. Um, I'll go ahead and collect those. Um, okay, a couple of other quick things. In that bag, see that bag is for you to take home with the things in it. Pull out, there's an order form in it. It's really a wish list. I want you to find your top 10 things that you love, and I want you to write that down. Doesn't mean that you're gonna buy them, but I want you to go home knowing what your top 10 favorite premier items are, so that come Christmas time or an anniversary, or when you do your show, or you go to a girlfriend's show, you know exactly what you wanna get. Plus, I'm curious, I wanna see what my favorite, uh, favorite guests are falling in love with, so I can let Premier know too what our top 10 items are in uh, the Chicago area. So write those down. Um, remember jewelry turns your old out your old clothes into new improved outfits like that. Um, you do pay for your items tonight. Cash, check, credit card. We have the husband protection plan which is part cash, part check, part credit. He never has to know. The jewelry is going to arrive to Michelle in about 10 to 14 days after we close the show. Um, but you'll be pleasantly surprised when it does come in sooner. And I'll send out an email to let everybody know when her stuff is on the way. So if a month goes by and you don't have your things, check out what Michelle's wearing because she's probably wearing it. And the nice part for you, Michelle, is all the jewelry that is delivered to you comes pre-packaged for each individual order. So you don't even have to sort it or anything. Um, ladies, any questions? For any additional Diva tickets, any questions? Or what did you learn for a Diva ticket? What did you, what did you fall in love with tonight? I want to know what your absolute favorite piece is. Oh, my absolute favorite piece? I think I am loving this bracelet. You guys, this is a must. Your girlfriends are going to be jealous. They're going to say, where on earth did you get that? And you're just going to have to tell them, I got it free. I got it for free. Um, but this is my favorite piece. Yeah. Diva ticket, Diva ticket. Okay, count your Diva tickets. I want to know who's going home with my Diva prize. <laughs> okay, woo, she's the big winner, and I give her a big fabulous diva prize that's probably no more than a buck or two off of the premier designs in Son of Store. Um, but that's it, ladies. Come on, we're just playing the jewelry. I've got more tricks if you want to see. Try this stuff on. This is Jewelry Playground. Um, I've got, if you're ready to place an order or have questions, I've got stuff set up in the other room. Um, but that's it. Thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. And <laughs> yeah. hope everybody had fun. Awesome. Would you say that's pretty easy to do? Very, very simple. How long was it? Oh, I did 20 minutes. minutes. It was like 20 minutes. 23 minutes. Unbelievable. Very simple. And I want to point some few things, a, key, a, a few key things out. Um, you may have little cards. That's okay. Amy's been doing this business for seven years. One of the most successful jewelry ladies I know. She uses cards. Why? Does she need these? No. She's got. She could do this in her sleep. She uses this because it, because then anybody can see themselves being the jewelry lady. You can use a flip chart. Yes. Yep. You, you can use a flip chart. You may want to go see another successful person's show. If you look at the DVDs, they're all just a little bit different. But what is the same is there's five elements of a home show. You're going to have that baby? No, no. Okay. <laughs> there's five elements of a home show. The Golden Guarantee. You must talk about the Golden Guarantee. Show the jewelry. You must show the jewelry. The hostess plan. That's showing how much free jewelry you can get. The booking activity. Bringing them to a point of decision. And the sponsoring activity. You may say, I don't want to sponsor anybody. That's okay. You still need to share the business because there's five elements of a home show. If you don't want to sponsor anybody, you just give them to Kelly Bach. And I will sponsor them for you. <laughs> but those are the five elements. I encourage you to go watch someone else's show. You may see certain differences. You may see 
maybe introductions at the beginning. I love this because I think it's natural because you're introducing people as they're coming in. So it may not be necessary to go around and necessarily introduce everybody. You've seen some shows where they may ask, what would you do with $1,000 in the beginning? That's okay. If you've seen somebody do a show like that and you like that, that's great. But did you notice, Amy didn't forget about that part. She just put it in a different place in the show. At the guest survey, close your eyes. What would you do? Do you see what I'm saying? So I don't want you to be confused. There's no right or wrong way to do a show. You just need to remember all of those five things. I know. Uh -huh. Sorry, do you find that when you're doing the hostess part of the, uh, of the presentation that it's more effective to do the draping or the boxes? I prefer the boxes and here's why. There's no right or wrong. I find that the jewelry starts getting all mixed up. Can you do that? You can. You can have somebody come up there and hold the jewelry and drape the jewelry. I like the boxes for two reasons. Number one, I think it's a good visual also, but then I have extra boxes because if I ever sell off my table, I have boxes there. And then also, I bring these boxes to check out because I have them sitting there. And it's real easy for me to just say, look at how much free jewelry you could get. But you know what? It's what you feel comfortable with. You're going to role play, you're going to be practicing these shows, you're going to go to Jewelers Club if, if, and, and, and practice, or if you don't, if, if there's not a Jewelers Club in, that your sponsor does, you're going to go practice at her house. You're going to practice things. And um, I did both. I had that tray, everything that I show, I show about, what, 10, 10 pieces maybe, 10, 12 pieces. That's what a hostess can get for free, because mm -hmm. on average, if a piece is about $35, that's 10 pieces, $350. So free and half price, that's what they can get. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I've shown both. And also, that what I did with the guest survey, and this was a collaborative effort between me, our friend Linda, Kelly, Donna, all of us working together. Um, I have the verbiage written out verbatim of everything that I said. We will email it out. Do we want you to stand there and read that, no, but we want you to practice it out loud a whole bunch of times. A whole bunch is not twice, a whole bunch is not four, a whole bunch of times means 20 times, 30 times out loud with this so you get comfortable saying it and it becomes, you, you remember what to say for each thing. Mm -hmm. And, and you know what, say you forget the golden guarantee. Uh, don't freak out about it, like, oh, I forgot to do that. If you're, you know how sometimes when you're showing jewelry, there might be that awkward silence. You know, you can then say, talk about the golden guarantee. There is no right or wrong, you, but you will get used to what you're doing. Um, what's inside of the boxes for deal or no deal? That's your choice. That's your choice. Okay, there's a lot of different things. You'll work with your sponsor on it. Some people put coupons. Some people use boxes um, to pass out because you have them. You may not want to buy a lot of things. These are $1.50. You can have little things in here. You can have a coupon in here. You can have a charm bracelet in here. It's whatever you want to be able to do, whatever you feel comfortable with. There's no like one exact way that you have to do it. Um, so the boxes, you can use these. Some people use the little purses, the little mini purses. All these things can be <laughs> gotten on Premier Incentives, just giving you some options. Um, if you want, we don't even have to do this. We don't have to have a customer special. Sometimes you can if you choose to, and here's why. Right now, Premier has one for us, so that's great. You don't have to make one up. You don't ever have to make one up. Uh, we have our prices are very, very low. But you know what? You may want to have something kind of in the back burner because sometimes this might happen at a show. Leah Sophia jewelry is very, very popular in this area. Seven out of 10 women will have heard about that, and three out of 10 will have heard of Premier. And so they're used to getting a deal. And so sometimes you might get somebody to go, well, do you have a deal? Do you have a customer special? And you're not going to say, well, Leah Sophia raises their prices just so they can just give you a deal. It's really, you know, ours is a low average price. You're not going to say that. But you know what? Sometimes people are really expecting that deal. So in your back pocket, you may just want to be able to have something. And you might say, my customer special tonight is if you buy three items, you can get the next at 25% off. Or you can say, if you buy three items, I have a gift with purchase. You may show this great uh, scarf during your show and then create the need, it costs a dollar fifty. So these are just options of things that you can do. Um, you know, what's inside of there. You may see somebody uh, collect the boxes right away. If you're comfortable when you're role playing, going up and saying, Would you like to deal? Would you like to deal? Would you like to deal? Do that if that works for you. If you're not comfortable doing that, 
And you, see, you just saw how Amy said, and you're going to see her finish up. We're going to continue on with this role playing. But she's still going to ask. You don't not ask. There's just different ways to do things on what you feel comfortable with. But I really encourage you, like Amy said, to speak out loud because it really, really does make a huge difference. The great thing about these guest packets, we used to call them guest folders. If you have a folder, go ahead and use it. But you know, it, you really don't need to use it. It's a, an added expense. Do you know that little guest packet? Do you still have it, Jean, or did we give it back? The little thing? That guest packet costs 20 cents. And um, you don't have to use the envelopes, but the envelopes are 3 cents. If you don't use the envelopes, you could just put it together right here. The great thing about it, we've just recently created a little referral coupon for you. <coughs> Makes it real, real easy. But the great thing about this is after they, they're done, everybody's going home with one of these. So it's just a great way to be able to um, give everybody that information. So that was quick, it was real quick. If you, um, let me give you an example, because there's always different shows. Say there's 10, 15 people at the show. If you want, you could bring people up. There's really cute little fun ways to show the hostess plan. You've all heard, or if you haven't, you, you probably will at some point, um, you know, using the words Frida or Anita or Ivana. You know, sometimes your crowd's really active, and you got to look at your crowd. If your crowd's really active and you got a lot of people there, people there, it could be really fun to pretend that the hostess's name is Anita. You know, you know, or you know, do you know what I'm saying? I need more money. You know, for the big money part, or you know, I need a jewelry makeover and I want to pay for it. You can have a lot of fun with that. You may want to bring them up, but guess what? If you always bring them up to the front, and all of a sudden, what happens if you have a show where there's three people at the show or four people? because that's going to happen. So you need to make sure that you adjust. And if you practice your show over and over and you get the components down, it doesn't matter. Because what can happen is if you do have three people and you're so used to having all three of them come up here and stand up, you're going to have everybody come up here and you're going to be look you're going to be doing a show to nobody. Do you see what I'm saying? So you saw Amy went over to that first person and put the jewelry boxes down. Do you see? There's different options, but you're still doing all of the components of a home show. Does that make sense? The one thing that I will always tell you, and I feel really strongly about this, don't choose the hostess to share the hostess plan. She's already booked the show. She's already booked it. Give the boxes to somebody who has not the hostess. Do you see what I'm saying? Because when she holds those things in her hand, she gets excited. I'm telling you, I don't know if this is true for you, Amy, but when I, the person that I choose to give the boxes, they're typically the, one of the ones that books the show. And then, of course, did you notice how Amy used the hostess to share the money? Because your hostess is the number one prospect at the show. She loves the jewelry. She loves to host a party, right? She's smart because she knows about free jewelry. So now she's going to be even smarter because she can see about how much money she can make. So those are just little tips. Does that make sense? Does that, did, did, didn't that feel just very natural? It wasn't like a telemarketer up here. Just very, very natural. And that's because Amy's done it over and over and over. And so just practice that and you will feel awesome. Um, it's great. I, make sure that you do go through that, use that Are You Curious sheet. It's a great booking and, and sponsoring activity. Um, if for some reason you like to do like a little skit and you've seen it, make sure you, you don't forget about that guest survey. I love this. Basically, you know how this came? It was just literally Friday night I had a show and there were so many people there. There was 20 people at that show and I knew I was losing them. So I kind of was forced. And I actually just did the guest survey right away because I love that thing. And that's kind of like I started just doing the show right there. And that was basically doing it all at once. But I did all five elements of the home show. Do you see what I'm saying? So anyway, that's the show. Does that, do, do you feel comfortable with that? Did you learn some great things? Did you see her tips when she was doing the jewelry about little things that she was saying? Okay, get your purses out. Oh. <laughs> you guys, yell it loud. The next letter is C. Check. Cell phone. Check. Calendar. Check. Cell phone. <laughs> Caroline, I'm here. Checkbook. The second C stands for what? I'm sorry. This C? The second C. The second C was B C S C again. Oh, it was. Oh, and during her show, you mean? Did you use? It was G. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. The before that, yes, it was. Um, 
Yeah, G. yeah. But then this this really wasn't part of the show. This was G for getting started. It was just part of this. Okay. I wasn't using that for oh, the show. Okay, okay. Yeah, I don't want to confuse you there. C C C stands for checkout. This is just a really really important part. Um, you want to be working the table. Amy talked about, you know, you don't want to just sit at checkout and sit there and wait for people to come to you for checkout. You're going to be actively working the table and putting jewelry on people and listening about what they're saying. There are, you know, you're going to see you're, there's always a couple people that are at that show that are putting jewelry on other people. You know, you're going to remember these because you're going to see what's going to happen um, at checkout in a little bit. Let me put my glasses on so I can see what's next. Um, so generally, you want to be able to have a little area where you can have your um, calendar there. We have this great little book for you. Uh, if you don't have a checkout book, um, sometimes people have a little basket, whatever, you want to be prepared. You don't want to be looking all over for stuff. If somebody asks you for something, you want it all in one spot. And so this is a nice little book that we have. You always want to have your calendar for when your next training is. You want to know when your next training is. Uh, my page says, put your calendar here. Amy's got a nice visual with her little um, open dates where she had all the gems. You want your guest packets um, in here so you have them all ready to go. And so this stuff is just all filled with stuff that you might need for a hostess packet. And it's got some information on here, you know, in case um, somebody's interested in, in a fundraiser. But if you have this with you and you have a lot of these extra packets with you, just in case somebody couldn't find theirs, I mean, they all have one, but maybe they put it down. This basically you want with you, you want to be able to have some change, little money purse, some people pay with cash. You want to be able to have that change. Boy, this thing is really tangled. Um, you want to have your calculator. And um, what else is that your checkout area? Put the boxes maybe for a visual. You want to be able to have that so people can see how much free jewelry they're going to get. Don't worry, I know that this happens a lot. People might be all lined up. And you are going to tend to want to just hurry up, add it up, and give them the receipt because that next person is there. And you're going to, you might feel a little bit stressed. I don't want you to do that. Amy's going to role play some checkout. And checkout is a very important part of the show. <coughs> Number one, it's a relationship, again, that you're getting with your customer. Okay? If somebody, if they're all put, you know, in line, just tell them to put their order form there and, and you'll call them. You know, go, you know, go chat or look at the jewelry and you'll call them up when it's their turn. I know that that's a big thing, I think, with, with new jewelers, is they're really, really nervous about, you know, when that line rolls up. So just don't worry about that. This is your relationship time that you're going to, um, that you want to work with them. So basically, Amy's going to come up with um, a few different, maybe, scenarios. I don't know what you have planned, but we'll just, we'll see. Uh, yes? One thing that I found new, I always make sure I have is a catalog and a holiday one, because a lot of people come with their receipt, and they only have what they want, and then I'm then I run into the living room trying to find a catalog. Yes, you should and have. That was stressful as a new jeweler because right? I was trying to find the number and I didn't have. Excellent it. point. That's good. Have a catalog there because there might be scattered out all over, and then you're running to be able to go get it. Okay. Yes, and you're going to see because basically, I'm going to just tell you this, and then Amy's going to role play it, and then I tell you again. Because generally, there's a few things that you're going to do at checkout. There's, you can up your retail, and Amy's going to kind of show you how you can do that. Um, you want to be able to get some shows on your calendar. They might say no, and then you might want to go for your, you know, courtesy call list or maybe later list or a referral. You might want to see if somebody wants to be able to do the business. There's lots of things to discuss at the checkout, but you're not going to sound like a telemarketer. You're going to just be able to have that naturally roll off like they're your friend. Just pretend that they're your friend that's sitting there. So Amy's going to go ahead and role play. Courtney, can I role play with you? you? You don't have to move. I'll bring it. Okay. Courtney, how are you? I'm hey, good. Good. Are you all set? Yes. Okay. Oh, you put your top ten down there. I. Sorry. I love what you've picked out. I actually love these. The other ones. Are you? Which items were you wanting to get tonight? The first two. The first two. Okay. Perfect. Oh, I love those. Did you know that that one has a matching bracelet? Oh, here we go. Yeah, the Venetian. Super cute. I know I didn't have that at my table. Um, yeah, do you do you like that one? Do you want me to add that? Sure. Okay. Okay. Great. La, 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 la. Okay, fantastic. Oh, and you know what? You have 
You've got the long necklace. Did you need to clip it? How much are those? Those are only ten bucks. Okay, perfect, good. All right, and what what about you, Courtney? You, I loved hanging out with you. You were the life of the party. <laughs> what about <laughs> when are we going to get together and do this and spoil you and your friends at a jewelry day? When are we going to do this together? Um, I don't know. I have to look at my calendar. Okay, you know what? Um, my calendar is going to get really busy. What about penciling a date? What do, what do you think is the best night if we were going to do something together? What would be the best night for you? Probably Friday. Okay, a Friday evening. You know what? Friday is one of my hottest dates, and I have only got, I've got one Friday left. I've got November 11th. Does that work for you? We could pencil it in. I'm not trying to push it, but we could pencil it in. You can go home and check your calendar, and if that date works, great. If not, we can move it around, but with Christmas coming, these dates are going to fill up, and I really want to party with you. What do you think? <laughs> sure. Sure. Okay. So good. We'll pencil that date in. And I'm gonna just gonna make a note on your form that says call um, to check, so I can give you a call tomorrow night maybe and see if that's gonna work for you. Okay. Okay. Perfect. All right. And your total is blah blah blah. And uh, okay. There you go. Thank you so much. You. It was great hanging out with you. Thank you. Okay. There you go. So do you see what Amy did? She first is suggested selling. First she worked on the retail. You know, and that's another reason you want to have that catalog there. Oh, I, I noticed you bought this and you bought this. Did you know that I have the earrings that go with it? I don't have them here on my table, but look, they're on page such and such. So um, that's another reason. You noticed in the, during the show, when Amy, during the show, she had you pull out that wish list and she had you fill it up. Well, why do you want it, her to do that? Because you can use that number one for retail. You can say, oh gosh, I see that you're getting these two items. Let's get that third one for you. And if she doesn't have enough money to get that, that's when you can go through and say, well, let's let's have fun and get, get this for free. So that's part of the reason that you want to be able to use that wish list. Then, of course, you're always going backwards. When she, if she says no, if she says, if she says yes, but you know, down the road, but she doesn't want to pick a date yet, you know what, it's so much easier if you get that date penciled in. If you say I'll call you tomorrow or whatever, the chances are much, much harder. So a couple key phrases that you can use are things like, you know what, I know that you don't have your calendar with you right now, but what if we just, my calendar's here, and just, why don't you give me your best three guesses, and then let's just circle the best one, and I'm gonna just write that in here, because this way Holly can get credit. When you say things like, this way Holly can get credit for that, she's going to be a little bit more, it's going to push her over the edge because she's going to want to help her friend. Okay? So you always want to be able to just be, be talking. You don't have to say the exact same thing with every single person. You're going to kind of be able to, you know, feel it out and see where you're going with it. So those are some things. I want to just give you a couple, some objections. You will get somebody saying, we're remodeling, or I'm having a baby, or I'm getting married. That's a, that's, and, and those are the, best ones to say, oh, people are going to want to see that new house. People are going to want to see that new baby. Let's get everybody together because they're going to want to see that baby. It's going to be awesome. So whatever objection, look in your jeweler's handbook. There's a whole bunch of answers on what you can answer with. Just memorize them. Just <coughs> memorize them because you they really don't have that. They're not just saying that. They're just a little bit nervous about maybe having a show. They really want one and you just are going to kind of help walk them in it. And you know what, sometimes they think that they don't want to have a bad show for you. Um, so they think, oh, you know, and they don't want they don't want to let you down. But you really do cover these objections and especially as new jewelers or any veteran jewelers, we have a tendency to take things personally. So when somebody says, that's why you also don't ask, do you want to do a show? Because if they say no, we take it personally, like we're awful and they don't like us and, and it's terrible and I shouldn't even be doing this business. And that's just natural because we, that's how we think. But when you say, I would love to get together with you, I had so much fun hanging out with you tonight, when can I come spoil you? When can I do this for you? She's going to give an objection if she's not sure. Instead of saying no, she really wants to do it, but she's going to be remodeling her kitchen um, so she doesn't know when she can do it. So that's why you need to get her to say, you need to do a what do you think or, you know, yeah, what, what do you think? Mm -hmm. I'd love to do this with and you. And you know what, don't stress about this. If you're, these are your first couple shows, you are not going to have all of this down pat. But that is why you want to be able to role play with your sponsor. 
every, your first 12 shows, every one of you, your first 12 shows, number one, you're going to want to call your, your sponsor and you're going to want to be able to tell her about it because she's going to be able to help you fix and tweak certain things on your show. And she can role play with you on the phone on different mm -hmm. checkout. If you're having trouble with something, she'll help you with that. But she won't know that she, she won't know what kind of trouble you're having if you don't call her. So you really, it's really important to be able to work on those things. When you say them out loud, it comes out naturally, and it, it, you will get all those. So don't worry about knowing exactly what to say. There's, there's all kinds of um, videos, too, that you can watch on all kinds of different ones. You just want to be able to make sure that you aren't rushing checkout. I just, that's the biggest thing I want to get. Yeah? Well, I always, whenever I am at checkout and someone, I'm like talking to someone about the show, their first question that they ask me is, well, how many women do I have to have? Exactly. And you know what? Let's say that you're at a show where there was 15 people and it was a Friday night. They think you only do Friday night shows or you only do nighttime shows and you only do them if there's that many people. And so you need to just say, you know what? I do daytime shows. I do nighttime. I do weekend. I, during the week. Um, I do it with just a few girlfriends, if they just want to have some fun shopping time with just you and a couple girlfriends, I'll come over and do a, a private showing. Because you will get people that say, I don't do shows. And say, well, let's not do a show then. Let's just get a couple girlfriends over and do some private shopping. So you need to let them know, because you're exactly right, Amanda. They think it's exactly what it was at that show. And you will get used to that. The great things, too, about having the coupon on here, every single person can go home. And you just... Didn't you fall in love with Amy? I mean, she was showing you all kinds of fun tricks. You're teaching. You're giving information. I mean, I would want to see her again. So the thing is, is they enjoyed you. They related to you. So you know what? Even if they don't want to have a show, I betcha they'll help you out and give you a referral. Right? Because you because you made it fun. So, so that's why you want to be able to have them go home with that. So they can... Um, what is the coupon that is in the back? What is this is just a coupon. We, this is just brand new. So if you don't have it yet, we literally, I mean, I made this up this weekend. They're like hot off the press. So this, and you can make it whatever you want. This one just happens to say a home show referral. Get 25% off your order at her show, your friend's show. $100 in free jewelry for, for a referral for, for, the, for your team. And then maybe um, just check us out. You can, call, you can shop at my cost if you want to hear a little bit more about the business. So really, it's just coupons for them. A woman doesn't want to use a coupon. Seriously, we all want to use one. So if you have this on here and she's going home with it, that's a great way. And um, um, it'll keep, keep your business going. So that is pretty much at the end. Now what's going to happen is we're going to get at the very end. And... Um, you're going to take all of your receipts and you're going to quickly add them up because you check out your customers first, right? You check them all out. That's one of the reasons, too, why we like to get the guest survey because not every single person may come to the checkout table. Not everybody will order. And usually those are the people that kind of check yes, that they either need money or yes, that they um, want free jewelry. So it's really, really important to have those guest surveys, too, there because you can, you can have that and just stick them right inside of that envelope so you have them because you're going to use them later. But you're going to add everything up and you're going to fill out this form and it's called Close Your Show with Sparkle. And what you're going to do is the top part of the form, very, very quickly, um, you're going to add it all up and kind of figure out how much free jewelry she got. <clears throat> of course, that's going to change because she might get some more orders. Um, but that's just a real quick estimate. And then you're going to take that number, and if, if the total retail was 600, you're going to come down here at the bottom, and you're going to just divide it in half. It's not exact because you may have given some customer specials, right? Maybe a discount. But don't worry, it's just, just an estimate. You're going to divide it in half. It was the $600 show. 600 divided by two is what? 300. 300 divided by four is 75. So basically, you now are going to, you have all your guest surveys. What was question number four? Do you remember? If, and remember how Amy said, y'all better write yes for that one, because she's going to de-Facebook you. <laughs> I love that. So number one, you're going to have these guest surveys. And if you had seven, 10 people there, probably at least nine of them are going to say yes, that they would help the hostess get started. So what's going to happen is usually there's always a few people kind of hanging around. And so all you're going to do is you're going to take that form, and sometimes you're going to just say, who wants to guess 
how much free jewelry Holly's getting. And you always have a few people that are hanging around and they're going to guess. And they're not going to believe it. You can tell them and you can show them. You can stack these boxes. You can have that Are You Curious sheet out there and see the free jewelry. And for some reason, they still don't believe you're really going to get that much free jewelry. But when you say, hey, Holly, guess how much free jewelry you're getting so far? And if it's around $300, the people are like, what? She's getting what? You'll be surprised at how you can get shows right then and there. It's very powerful. The other part is you're going to plop down and you're going to say, Courtney, oh my goodness, I just made $300 tonight. That could so have been yours. I played with, played with jewelry with your friends and, and made $300. Wouldn't you love to be able to have that? Doesn't that sound pretty good? And guess what? Nine of your friends here tonight said that they would help you get started. I'm handing you a business on a silver platter. Let's get going on this. Do you see how powerful that is? You just made $300 in her home. And wow, seriously, girl, $75 an hour. Know what you got, $50 an hour, even $25. Even if you, you're going to have, remember we talked about low shows, high shows? You're going to have a $200 show. That's a low show. You made 100 bucks. That's $25 an hour, girls. That is more money that you're going to get working at the mall. So you know what? Share it. That's really awesome. You guys should be really excited about this. Share it with your hostess. Your hostess is the number one prospect that, and, and, and to become a jewelry lady. So that's kind of ch um, checking out. You're checking out the hostess. Next letter. You guys ready? Oh, we've got two more letters. 15 minutes and we're going to be done. Next letter is O. Ooh, that's harder. O. Orange cat. Orange cat. Oh, Jean, you're so creative. Uh, okay. Orange cap. Anybody else? <laughs> Anything else? Oh, yeah, there are two. Yeah, I already got them. Here we go. Thank you. Orange purse. Orange purse. Orange purse. That's a guy. I'm a toddler. O stands for organization. You want to have an organized show system because guess what? This is a business, ladies. If you have a show and you have checks kind of all over the place in cash or if you do credit cards and you forget to process them, this is a business and we want to keep you organized and on target so that you can have a successful show. So basically, where's the sheet protector? You're going to, the easiest thing to do, girls, is put all your checks in here, um, the guest surveys, the order forms, everything all in one spot. Amy Logan has this awesome show system I'm going to have her tell you about because she's got, you know, the, the, the four things. Mm -hmm. And then she's going to kind of just share with you. Or real quick, remember when I had that uh, sparkle sheet and you write down like the bonuses that they got? Sometimes if you got two or three shows in a row, you almost kind of forget, wow, did she have ten girls there or whatever. So that's what this box is for right here. You can just simply write down the bonuses that she got so that way when you got home you don't have to remember if she did you're going to know it so you're going to do that and amy's going to talk about the organization and the file system in the in the show um how many of you would feel so much better about your business or about anything if you were organized me too and this has really helped me um i keep everything in a sheet protector so number one nothing falls out and i've got a hostess book of shows where all my shows are in there um, and I love that this is a checklist that you can you can work full time and do this part time and still stay <coughs> organized and do it and it's very easy. It's, it, just follow the checklist. And I have four file folders on my desk. I have one file folder that says this month's show. And if you work full time, I'm at home all the time, so I keep it on my desk. But if you work full time, put it in a binder and have it divided into these sections so you can take it with you and make phone calls on your lunch hour or do whatever you need to do on your breaks, whatever, very easy. Um, the first file folder says this month. It's all of my shows that are this month, so every, every show that I have is in chronological order in that, so they're right at my fingertips. I can call and check in with my hostesses and stay in contact with them. The file right behind that says open shows. Sometimes you'll have a show that your hostess, you don't close it out that night, and, um, but you go home and you enter the show, but she's just waiting on one other order, and, um, but you've got a payment and everything. That goes in my open show file folder because it's a visual for me. Um, I want everybody, this is Donna Marone thing, everybody look at me and go like this. That's right, I'm What's that? 
Straight out. Oh, straight out in front of you. Okay, yeah, go like this. Okay, now put it on your chin. Okay, most of us put it on our cheek, and I said to put it on our chin because we're visual. So this is a visual system that will help you. So if the show is still open, you put this file in the open show file folder. Very easy. That cues me that I have an open show out there, and I want to make sure I get it closed. When I close that show and send it off to Premiere, then it just goes from that file folder to the next file folder that says closed, waiting for jewelry. Because now I know that I've closed it, but they haven't gotten their jewelry yet. Once they get their jewelry, and I call the hostess and check in with her, make sure she's got it and everything is good, then I move it to the next folder behind that says 45-day courtesy call list. And that's where it stays until, you know, so when I have free time, then I can call and just check in on jewelry. Once it's done with there, I put it in my 2011 hostess binder on my shelf, so it's easily accessible for me. But it's super easy. It's a visual. It lets me know if a show is open if somebody hasn't gotten their jewelry yet or courtesy calls. And that's what that checklist is for on the right hand side. Just make sure that it's not put all the way away until you, all of these things have been checked. There's one more thing that you can do for um, a booking, in, um, a booking, oops, I'm just gonna, sorry here, a booking and sponsoring. And that is a, this is a wonderful thing that I like to be able to use because basically, when it's time for the jewelry to come in, you want to be able to let all the customers and the hostess to know when it's coming in. It gives great customer service. And you know what? This is a great time, and that's why I want you to let every single customer know. You might have some customers that don't order, right? But they filled out that guest survey, right? What was on that guest survey? An email. email. So you want to make sure that when you're entering in that show, you enter in everybody, even the ones that didn't order, because this is very powerful. I promise you, I have booked shows from this. I have sponsored from this. It's one more time. Number one, you're saying thank you. Basically what you're saying is, premieres are the people business. They choose to put their money into people. So that kind of gives you, it's kind of your way of saying that it's okay to talk about this. The customers, the hostesses, the consultants. And this is real easy. Everything that's highlighted are things you're gonna change. This is just all in a Word document. You can copy and paste it, super simple. And you'll just let them know how much free jewelry and how much your profit was and that you have a great referral program. And it gives great customer service and you're saying thank you. So it's just one more tip, one more time that you can go over um, with your customers. Be genuine. You need to thank the people that ordered, oh, a $20 item just as much as you thank the person that ordered $400. Okay, just be, I want to make sure we didn't talk about that. Last letter, last letter is I. I iPod, iPod. Up right here, whoop, whoop, one, two, three. <laughs> iPod, ink pen, awesome. I stands for integrity and ethics. This is a good one, and you know what? This is your business, and, um, you are premier. Your customers, your hostesses, you may be the only person that they ever see with premier. And so you want to represent the company well. And the company is so generous. Our hostess plan, the profit that we make, so generous. And we don't ever want to lose that. And let me give you an example. You may not even think, like, well, gosh, Kelly, I wouldn't do anything bad. But you know what? You, we're. Women like to help their friends, and you may not even realize something. So let me give you an example of what we mean by this. The four bonuses. The four bonuses are there, and they're very generous. But if one person, one jeweler, one show happened to cheat, even not even on purpose, because I'm going to tell you, sometimes people think that they're not really cheating. They're just thinking they're helping their friend out. But if you took that 25 times all the jewelry ladies times all the shows, it's a lot of money lots of money and Premier is so generous to us so let me tell you an example let's say there's nine people at the show and grandpa was in the back um, in the back room reading the newspaper and if somebody just says well you know my dad was back there can't we count that person as number 10 you might not even think you're doing anything wrong but you know what it's not your $25 that you're giving away remember we don't buy the hostess jewelry Premier does and so you don't want to say, you know what, yeah, I'll do that. Because here's what's going to happen. Say Jean, um, say Jean's uh, the hostess, and I gave her, oh, you got nine? Well, okay, yeah, I'll give it to you. You were close. 
And let's say that Corrine and Sharon <coughs> were at Jean's show. And Corrine books a show. And then Jean says, oh, don't worry. Just if you get close, if you get seven or eight, Kelly will give it to you. She gave it to me. Do you see? Number one, I mean, you're hurting your business, and you're hurting my business, and you're hurting Jean's business, because you're hurting everybody when you, hurt, when you do that. And you may not even think you're doing it on purpose. Your best friend might say, oh, come on. Hi, Kelly, I'm your best friend. Who's going to know? You know what? You know how it's real easy to say that? Just say, you know what? God's going to know. I, you know, I, I, I just can't do it. If it were my jewelry, I would gladly give it to you. But it's coming from Premier, and I just can't do that. Our company is based on honesty and integrity. She's not going to keep going at you. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's what we mean. A booking, three bookings means in your calendar. And that's why we want to always say, hey, let's pencil this in. Now, Premier doesn't wait. They don't say, wait till you hold them all. You know, I mean, somebody might cancel. So don't, you know, don't worry about that. That's out of your control. But it needs to be in the calendar. It's not, oh, yeah, three people checked maybe later on the guest survey. I got three bookings. That's not a booking. It's got to be in the calendar. Does that make sense? Um, so that's part of things. I just want to make sure you're, you know, in, in your, um, as you're calling your, your sponsor at the end of all these, you can go over all those things and just, you know, um, <coughs> she, she'll let you know. You also don't want to, you want to under-promise. Did I say this right? Under-promise and over-deliver. Generally, it does take five to seven business days for the jewelry to come in. But we don't want to say that because, you know, sometimes it could take a little bit longer or there could be issues with the post office. So you want to be able to maybe just say it takes 10, you know, 10 days. It's usually less than two weeks because guess what? When they do get the jewelry, they're so excited. And they're going to know when they get the jewelry right away. Why? Because you're going to tell them. Another reason you want to send this out is because, you know what? What could happen is your hostess sometimes can hold on to that jewelry for a long, long time. And you've told your customers, you know, it's going to be less than two weeks. So this holds the hostess accountable because now all the customers know when that jewelry is coming in. So you see how that all ties in and it all kind of helps you? Another thing, so you got the bonuses. Um, be on time. If you, if you have a problem with this, because there are a lot of, my husband's one of them. I mean, I have to always pretend that something's 15 minutes earlier because otherwise we would always be late. I'm a very punctual person. To me, being on time is late. Early is being on time. That's my rule. I'm very, very strong on that. Amen. Uh, <laughs> what I will do is I will get to a place. If I told my hostess, Kelly was here yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> I can't bother. No, but you know what? Because if you're late, you know what you're, you know what you're doing. Like, say if you're late for something, you're basically telling the person waiting on you that your time is more valuable than them. Think about that. If you have a problem with this, think about that, and I guarantee you it'll fix it right away. Because wow. That's powerful. So if you tell your hostess that you're going to be there at 5 o'clock to hostess coach her, 10 o'clock in the morning and hostess coach her, don't keep her waiting. Go early if you, in case you get lost. That's, that's part of integrity. That's part of ethics. You know, do what you say you're going to do. And if you tell her you're going to be there for 15 minutes to do a hostess coach, be there for 15 minutes. Don't stay longer unless you've asked her, would you like to hear more? And if she says yes, then do that. Okay? So these are all types of things. Um, alcohol policy, that's always a big one. There is zero exception when you are at premier events, meaning if you're at rally. Zero. No alcohol, period, nada. Not going to happen. If you're at work, okay? I used to work at McDonald's Corporation. If I sat there on my lunch hour and had a beer, am I going to get fired? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Same kind of thing when you are at a premier event. Now, what's going to happen at a home show? I realize we might all be out of a business. Here's what you can do. Because there is many hostesses serve wine, they get a glass of wine. They're not there to get drunk or all that kind of stuff. But on your hostess packet is somewhere on there, it talks about the alcohol policy. And what I say is, um, you know what? It says no alcohol here. You're a big girl. You can do what you want in your home. You heard Amy say that. But did you remember what she said at the, when she was role playing that hostess coach? But I would just prefer it if I could just get through, you know, just get through my show. You know, do you see what I'm saying? I mean, you're in their home. You really can't say you can't have this. And what is rude is if you get there and they're serving alcohol and you go, up, sorry, I've got to pack my jewelry up and go home. I mean, that's, that's not, you know what I'm saying? So 
that's kind of how you handle that. But when you are at a rally or at any kind of a premier event, there is no question ever, there is no alcohol. So, and that's I, good because we'd all be dancing on the table. So, you know, <laughs> you know, we have a natural high with our jewelry and with each other, our sisterhood, so we have fun. So, am I missing anything with ethics or integrity? Anybody? Um, Look at this, it's two minutes to nine. We said we would be done at nine and we were. Woohoo!